know, the Goldington Green End are uh, both pace. I would imagine one of them at least will be a spinner. Um, and, uh, you know, Cambridgeshire will be will be hoping for much the same, really. Uh, trying to get the boundaries. Eddie Ballard will try and take the attack to them, no doubt. And uh, we avoided being hit in the first match. Fingers crossed we can make it two out of two. Yeah, well, you're saying that uh, Sam's going to be joining us, so he'll he, yep. he'll uh, he'll be able to act as a fielder, won't he, if uh, exactly. if any balls do come uh, in our direction. We're at the Peter Allen end of the uh, Bedford Cricket Club here, which is where we're broadcasting from uh, this afternoon. There's a few more signals, by the way, going on from the umpire. Don't think they're quite ready to start, but equally, I don't think it's going to be uh, that far away either. Uh, hopefully, despite the relatively short changeover, players were uh, able to have some of the, las the lasagna, which was uh, being served up. There may some still be some left for you, Ollie, if you manage to uh, get a chance to, uh, to to nip across there. I think I saw some very nice uh, trifle or oh. of some description, um, poss possibly strawberry, uh, which was in, in business as well. Also got some uh, sausage rolls in my bag as well, which yeah. I might, uh, might might bring out as well. I've got some mini Scotch eggs. I might pop my my open, crack them open, and anyway, oh, anyway. Cricket, cricketing staples. Oh yeah, of them. I forgot. Yeah, we're commenting on cricket, aren't we? Uh, yes. So uh, as you mentioned, Julian, um, Bedfordshire are going to open with spin. Whack as I saying, we'll face the first ball. Just one man out, cow corner, on the leg side, and I believe, and one man down at deep long, uh, long on. Sorry as well. So two out. Spinner to start, looks like Andy Reynoldson perhaps, into Waxer Sane, little bounce, play down to the leg side and no run. Our live uh, video coverage is uh, now up and running. We've got it in front of us, it's literally turning around to Rob, is that, on, is that online as well? Thumbs up from Rob, so if you want to go to uh, cambridge105.co.uk uh, slash live cricket, you'll be able to watch uh, all of this, uh, if this match, which is, I think will probably go round to uh, 5, 5.30, will that be about all right, Lolly? Yeah, yeah, exactly, is the... For Chew Bowler comes in again. Tidy start so far. This is what we spoke about, I think, with, with Josh, saying that a lot of teams like to use the first over as spin because it gets one of them out of the way. But spin's been very useful so far. So, clearly using it to take wickets and, and have one plopped into the leg side. And hurtling through the uh, the balls as well on this. Yep. Yeah, so exactly. Spin, very, very fast turnaround. Yep. Almost as quick as Callum running back to his mark earlier on as Bedfordshire comes in again. What is saying? Full defence into the offside. No run. Just trying to eye up Sam Rivers and catch his eye. Where is he? He might be hiding in the uh, in the changing room. Can't quite see him. Anyway, I think it's Reynolds in again. Any bowls down the leg side might be. One must have clipped the pad on the way through. So first over, I think it's a maiden for Beverly. Great start for them. Not for naught after one. Okay, so that's um, I just uh, looking at some of the other other matches. I'm keep going to keep an eye good eye on. Uh, what's happening at Old Trafford, where uh, India are playing Pakistan uh, today in that one-day international. Last time we uh, checked on that, there was uh, a rain delay up there as well, which seems to have gone on for actually a little bit longer uh, than the one that uh, we experienced here, which uh, caused a few um, delays. Um, some breaking football news as well for you this afternoon, as Maurizio Sari is leaving Chelsea uh, for Juventus, blimey! I yeah. guess that's not um, not not the greatest surprise. I think nope. that uh, very much we were possibly expecting a departure, but Maurizio Sarri uh, leaving Chelsea for Juventus. We're not uh, thinking too much about football this afternoon, though. No. Uh, we're concentrating on the cricket. Uh, we're live here at the Bedford Cricket Club uh, for the second of two uh, matches. Um, of Bedfordshire against Cambridgeshire, and we'll uh, we'll keep you uh, up to date both on India Pakistan. Um, 324 for five India at the moment, by the way, just uh, an over and a bit left in that game, and the one of course which affects how Cambridgeshire will finish, and indeed whether they get into uh, finals day, and that is uh, the Hertfordshire uh, versus Norfolk at Harpenden. Yes, yeah, so in comes Walston home again, opening the bowling with pace from this end, same end as he did last time, and it's a dot ball to start. Eddie Ballard will look to take the attack to my imagine with pace on the ball. Anything pitched up and he might be hitting over our heads here. Hopefully over our heads and over the van. So, Alston home. He's got round to his mark again. Coming in, galloping forward. Right arm in. Going to be into the wind and that's a thick edge away and it's gone for four. A big swing from Eddie Ballard, thick edge past Gully, 
and uh, a little lad in a turquoise top fetches the ball from the bushes and he turns around he's hoping he can find it but a good start for Cambridgeshire in this over four for Eddie Ballard he means to finish means to go on as he finished in the last match It's interesting the speed at which some of those little, little mini games were taking place around uh, the outside, outside of the uh, boundary rope. They've been mm. uh, cleared away now. And I think we have um, even more people watching. Look, if you, if you look yeah. over the far side there, along the hedge, you've got a collection of people in their little chairs. Stolworthy in this, uh, sorry, uh, Walsh in this time. And uh, a wide ball. Stolworthy, I'm sure that was there. Just looked at the Norfolk scorecard, that's why it popped into my head from last time. <laughs> Wilson home, a short ball there, well wide of Eddie Ballard, and it's a wide first of the day. Or first of the inning, sorry. Wilson home in Eddie Ballard, batting his bat down onto the wicket. In he comes, right arm short ball, looked to be wide again, and he's, yep, he's signalled another two wides on the trot. So. So far, we're effectively six off one ball so far. Only four of those go to Eddie Ballard, though. Just a reminder that just before three o'clock, we'll be leaving you on FM, DAB and the radio player. If you want to uh, continue to be in touch with the cricket, cambridge105.co.uk slash live cricket. Also known again on the back foot, cut away by Ballard and straight to the man at point. No run. It's only a peaceful afternoon. You think, you know, you think of Bedford as uh, being um, a pretty decent-sized town, mm. and uh, but here, they're tucked away in this this quiet corner, there's some other sort of sports fields and stuff uh, uh, in the in the neighbourhood close to us here as well. But uh, it could be a, a village in rural England. Yeah, very village-like ground. As oh, in comes Walsh home again, full ball, and Ballard swinging a miss, and it's gone for the keeper as well. That's going to be four buys. Yep under the sight screen and four runs to Cambridgeshire. Moved on to 10 so far after 1.2 overs. All flung back there. We've got the two sight screens on either side of the ground, both where uh, we are here and uh, facing us uh, opposite as, as well. But they've been draped in black so that the white ball stands out against uh, the, the field. Uh, there was re running repairs at the Peter Allen end on, Allen end on the side screen uh, during the interval. Also no in again, just good length cut away by Ballard. And um, Wackers are saying he's on strike now. If you're just joining us, Cambridgeshire won their first game earlier on this afternoon. Two T20s are being played here today. Uh, the second one now going on between Bedfordshire and uh, and Cambridgeshire. And uh, Cambridgeshire have to win, but they also need Norfolk to win against Hertfordshire. Comes Walston home again. Just a again, a slow, sort of wide you... bouncer. And I think he was a shot at the stumps and... A couple of fielders frantically cover the ball to try and sort of going for over for O's. Another wide signal. That's 12 now, I believe, off this over. We saw this in the first innings as well, didn't we, where Bedfordshire were just a little bit untidy from time to time yep. uh, in, in the field. Yeah, a number of over throws. Sloppy, it was swinging a miss from Waxer saying wide again, but not wide enough for the umpire to put his arms out in front of him and signalling to the scorers. I'm looking for a signal from Rob, which might happen at some point, because uh, <laughs> FM, uh, digital radio and radio player listeners, uh, will be leaving us uh, just before 3 o'clock. But coverage uh, continuing of the second T20 match between Bedfordshire and Cambridgeshire online. There's video pictures as well. It's kind of like a Sunday league match in the 1980s as far as the TV coverage is concerned. But, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah, so the end of the over there, I believe, and... 12 off it, no wickets lost, and two overs gone. Continuing with spin, our Bedfordshire, and I think the uh, we'll see if it's a new bowler or not. The opening bowler, I believe, was Andy Reynoldson, wore sunglasses. I don't think this might be George Darlow who does not have sunglasses on. So, into the third over now, 12 without loss as Eddie Ballard on strike. Oh, and that's got a lot of turn and bounce, a lot of bounce on that one. It was a good length ball, almost full length. Eddie Ballard put his front foot out there to probably try and clear the ropes he did in the first innings, but what 
leaped up into the wicketkeeper's gloves as Darlow comes in again. Oh, similar sort of bounce, but control this time into the leg side, no run. Actually, we've got two cameras, which possibly makes it better than Sunday League coverage <laughs> of the 1980s. <laughs> very much so. Very and, we have, much. and we have the score on screen all the time as we well, do. which is another advantage. As you can see, it's 12 without loss of two overs, and that's going to be 16 without loss. That's a lovely shot from Eddie Ballard. Rock back on the back foot, wide outside off stump, just probably too short and cut away for four. 16 without loss. Gentleman in white floppy hat passed us by. He is uh, now uh, standing over there. He's wandered, going on a little wander now to uh, uh, young men passing them. And there's other people who are scattered around uh, the ground, which is equally surrounded by trees. I saw a few sixes go over them earlier. We did, and Dolo comes in again. Eddie Ballard just cutting through to Gully. I'll be leaving FM DAB radio player listeners shortly. Don't forget, stay tuned uh, to us on cambridge105.co.uk slash live cricket. And continuing for listeners and indeed viewers on cambridge105.co.uk slash cricket uh, with some uh, unfortunate news for the uh, Cambridgeshire side have lost their first wicket there. So now uh, 17 uh, for one. Yeah, Eddie Ballard, the man to go. Disappointing. He looks gutted and disappointed for Cambridgeshire. A man who has so much momentum for Cambridgeshire in that first match has gone. Looked like, uh, like he was bold. Didn't quite see it, but... Uh, like the bells were off at the end, so it's a disappointing start. Yeah, it's happened in the first Boom. innings, opportunity for a drinks uh, break, but look look who's coming in, it's Tiny Tim. <laughs> Tim again looking to, he'll look to try and make amends after the first innings, a uh, first match, sorry, where he, he did sort of hit a lovely boundary, cover drive through the offside and then just caught a leading edge. Ballard and, holding uh, his bat in the middle, quite despondently going into... Uh, the uh, Cambridgeshire dressing room, which is sort of in the centre between the scoreboard and the pavilion itself. He's going to be very disappointed that he wasn't able to uh, uh, replicate his score of the first innings. A couple of pedestrians wandering across the cameras. It literally couldn't be more obvious. But uh, It does look like a camera. We haven't disgui disguised it in any, in any shape or form. And they sort of smiled afterwards, just not aware at all. Anyway, Tim Moses in. He'll... Uh, be looking to try and just keep the momentum towards Cambridge, try and get some boundaries, try and get this up at six, six and over. And, uh, and, uh, and there, Julian's papers have flying across, flown across the ground. He's recovered them. Similar to Keith Coburn at Source, and it was last time, it's Julian this time, but uh, didn't catch it on camera. Managed to recover in time for the over. It's getting the wind is picking up now, and that's a lovely shot from Timo. It's very similar to his first ball in the first match. It's a lovely cover drive. Didn't reach the boundary this time. Stuck in the grass and slowed up a bit. And, uh, and Timo is down on one knee. Still probably taller than most of us, but uh, 17 for one off three overs. Then helps to have things nailed down here. I think. <laughs> Yeah, a great turn of pace though to pick up those papers, though, Julian. No, it's not bad. I, th I didn't. What I didn't want them to do is wandering off into the middle of the field. That could have been a bit of a distraction. <laughs> well, we had a number from Keith Coburn last time, so I'm sure just that one little note would have been fine. But anyway, I think spin once again is the go-to option. As it's a whack as a sane on strike. Tim Moses at the non-striker's end. And uh, so, unfortunately, the wicket's full so far. Eddie Ballard, who uh, was good, doing so well for Cambridgeshire in that first match, got 64 runs, really set the, the momentum towards them. Unfortunately, fell in this match. But like we said before, they've got so many big hitters, Cambridgeshire. It won't phase them. Tim Moses has been scoring lots of runs with the bat. In fact, I should probably get my stats up. My iPad's probably cooled down by now. In comes the... Spin option for Had Bedfordshire, hitting to the leg side towards deep, towards long on. Had a few showers to uh, to maybe cool it down. The temperature certainly dropped. I feel a little bit as well. I think as soon as as soon as the sun goes in, you feel the temperature drops 
a few degrees. It's 19 mm. degrees here in uh, Bedford at the moment, the, uh, the Bedford Cricket Club. The score is 24-1. Uh, Eddie Ballard just scoring the nine this time around. Um, but uh, Hussain, actually, it's Hussain still still to score, isn't he, I think, in this in this, in this innings? Yeah, it looks as though, if the score goes up to date. You'll hopefully be relying on him to maybe add uh, a few more uh, runs than he did last time around uh, to two things. Maybe more um, attention being given to the uh, the sight screen at this point. It's moving it over a little bit uh, more uh, towards us. You know the squeaky noise that it uh, makes. The uh, uh, bats run. That's um, Tiny Tim. Tim Moses wanting that uh, to be moved just to make sure that when the bowler uh, bowled the white ball, it can be seen uh, clearly against the black background. Uh, of the side screen, white ordinarily, which has been uh, draped in a black cloth uh, on on top of that. As uh, Ollie returns with, uh, they're not Scotch eggs. They're not proper Scotch eggs, look, are they? They yes, for legal reasons, they have to be called egg bites instead. Yeah, they're food. They'll do. No, no, no. That's fine. I'm, I'm happy. Am I allowed to have one? By the way, of having course, to divide them up now. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll share my sausage rolls later. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Lovely shot. Timo's down the ground for a single. James Williams and Josh Bowers, both of Wisbeach, cross us. James sensibly walks behind the cameras. Josh smiles in front of them. So uh, they're the men on the sight screen. Oh, they're, they're, yeah, they might need a few more men. They don't seem to be moving it. They, they moved it a few. They moved it towards us, and now they're moving it back again. It's because so Wax is saying. He's oh, of course, the yes. They're the batsman's cross, didn't they? That'll, that'll be the reason why. We've got a right hander and a left hander out there as well. Mm hmm. So, Ollie, what did you think of that last over? <laughs> the egg was nice. <laughs> In come to spin bowler once again. Wackersan gets to the pitch of the ball and hits over mid off to cover region. It's gone for four runs. Great sh shot from Wackersan. Lovely, mate. Sam Rippington walking past. And he's going to go in front of the camera as well. <laughs> That's three out of four people now have done that. Oh, you just know that every time people walk past that camera. They're going to have their, uh, their little moment of fame. In comes the spin bottle once again now. Wackerstein uses his feet to get to the pitch ball again. And it's a... Oh, oh it's going to be cut off really That well. was very good. A very good stop there. I think from... Is it George Darlow on the leg side boundary? And Wackers uses his feet to get to the pitch ball, clipped it over into the leg side, and the sweeper stopped it from going before... Darlow in the sort of the navy blue tracksuit esque kit of uh, Bedfordshire with uh, got some sunglasses perched on his head and some orange trainers as well. It's following the football trend, really, as a multi coloured footwear. A lot of the players have uh, white. I can also see Dayglow green as well as the Dayglow orange. White for the bowler. In comes Bedfordshire bowler once again. I'm surprised that's not Stop. an issue. On the, I'm surprised that's not an issue on the sight screen as well, actually, with uh, uh, with various coloured shoes which uh, people have to uh, have to contend with. Tim Moses facing now in the fourth over, and he's gone for a, a big shot over a cover, and it's going to drop safe. There's no fielder out here on the offside over cover, and he's chipped it and got a single. Let's see if we can update the the scorecard for you. Yeah, let's have a look. Um, and, uh, but, uh, I don't think we've got a recent update on that. What I'm going to do, though, is to uh, have a look at India-Pakistan, where I can tell you India have scored 336 for five off of their uh, 50 overs. I um, think that will probably be a full 50 overs for Pakistan. They did go off for a short while uh, for rain, but I think uh, Pakistan will have a full 50 overs in which to get 337, uh, one more than India's total. Also keep an eye, of course, on Norfolk uh, versus uh, Hertfordshire when we can get a, uh, a score uh, on that one. We'll, we'll bring that to you. Yeah, in comes Darlow. Bedfordshire. Tim Moses goes big on the leg side towards Cal Corner. He's going to plug and drop short. They sent Moses in, of course, up the order in the first of the uh, of, of the two matches today, didn't they? And uh, interestingly enough, uh, well, last time around he wasn't able to uh, uh, to make make it across. 
and uh, to succeed. But uh, he seems to be staying in uh, a little bit longer. Oh, it's a wicket. And uh, Waxer says the man's go try to sweep. Fitzhugh Bowler, it's a, it's like a top edge, and the wicketkeeper ran around and caught the catch very well in the end. Hussain loses out again, doesn't he? He didn't do too well in our first uh, our first match here today, and it seems to be much uh, uh, the same story for him by the looks of things uh, in his second innings again. So Callum Guest, the man to walk out, can he break his Cambridge 105 radio? Yeah, this, this, is, not, this is not this is not promising. Well, <laughs> but um, we're hoping we're hoping that Callum uh, does does it this time around. That that's that's for sure. But uh, again, rather. Uh, rather like Tim Moses wasn't able quite to pull it off in the the first of uh, the the two games here. It's Twenty eight for two uh, currently, uh, Cambridgeshire. Yeah, Wackers are saying the man's depart, being replaced by Callum Guest. So two Sawston boys out in the middle again. Norfolk are thirty without loss. So a good start for Norfolk going at six and over in that match. That's after the uh, the fifth over there. So that's uh, taking place at Harpenden at the moment. George Darlow still bowling from this end, we believe. Into the fifth over now, Cambridgeshire, 28 for two. So both of the uh, two matches uh, taking uh, the, the one at uh, Harpenden and the one here at Bedford starting round about the same time, which possibly brings a little bit of uh, edge to the match. Yeah, in comes Darlow into Callum Guest. He just plods into the leg side for no run. So Callum Guest was... Fortunately, out last time, I believe, for a duck, but this time straight back to the batsman. Well, it wasn't many, was it, last time? I think it was, I think it was out for naught off one delivery, if I remember correctly, on the other scorecard. Yeah, so in comes Darlow again, played down to the offside. And uh, no run again. Yeah, so two Sawston boys at the crease, Callum on strike, plays down towards... Long on for a single. Tim Moses back at the striker's end. And that will be the end of the over. The score 29 for 2 after 5. It's worth looking at the Unicorns T20 Group 3 table, uh, which has Bedfordshire, unfortunately, on the bottom of that with four points above them. Norfolk on six. Suffolk and Cambridgeshire both on eight points. Hertfordshire on ten. The difference, of course, Suffolk have already played. Uh, their eight games by the looks of things. Not quite sure how that works out on that, but they've, they've uh, marked down as having played. Yeah, so they, they, they finished their fixtures last, I think, last weekend. Okay, so so, it's, so really, uh, it, it's fairly straightforward. Um, Hertfordshire, Hertfordshire lose Norfolk, we hope, and Cambridgeshire uh, then win the second of the two games here. And it will also then, then it will be down to net run rate, is that correct? Yep, and it looks at the minute with Cambridge's net run rate up at 0.76. Hertfordshire and, and Suffolk's in the minuses that Cambridgeshire, they win here, they've got a good chance. Well, I'll keep you up to date on that as uh, we move uh, through the afternoon here. It's a dot ball to start this end. Oh, and Callum Guest goes big for a big swing and a miss into the wicket. He was hand two dot balls to start this over. Looking to try and improve on the earlier matches score in again. Oh, and it's an outside edge, and it might race away for the fielder. Comes around now, he's covered it, and it's just a single and brilliant field, and he got away really quickly to that ball. And uh, Callum Guest, another single to his name. Tim Moses on strike. The Sam Riverton and Josh Bowers get on the sight screen. Two men go out on the leg side to Cal Corner and sweeping on that leg side boundary. As these two switch over, this has become going to become a regular thing, isn't it? If, uh, mm. as, if they, as we hope, uh, stay in for most of the match. Yep, it is. Uh, Sam Riverton and Josh Bowers are going to have a sore back by the end of uh, this afternoon if they continue. In comes Bedfordshire Bowler again. And uh, Tim Moses has gone high and that might be out. It's going to be caught. Oh, no, he's no, dropped, he's dropped it. it. Oh, he's dropped him. It was a long high ball. And he went high in the air, and he's having to come and walk back towards us now. And it was it was moving in the wind, but Tim Moses survives. Tim scored just a five in the first match earlier today. One of those of the four. Lovely shot from Callum. Guess just to the the man at mid off. And uh, looking at the. 
the earlier matches, the earlier match today, and, and looking at the, the scorecards of Callum was LBW for one. So already surpassed that. Tim Moses, like Julian just said, out for five. So both players will be hoping to, to get on the score sheet. That's a lovely shot. Oh, slapped and great work from the, the field. And it could be a run out. No, Moses takes about two steps and he's down at the other end of the uh, the wicket and a the, single. The shot itself, that had that it picked out of field as it rolled across the ground, uh, was, was pretty good. You had that nice firm sound of the ball hitting the bat and then it was sort of, was sort of heading almost in, in our direction. Not, not quite, perhaps. Yeah, lovely shot. Crisp off the bat. Just uh, about five yards Water the field, he managed to cover and get it. Josh Bowers' hand once again in front of the uh, the camera. Sam Rippington walks behind it. Thank you. He did say, join us for a commentary stint later, but... It's coming. He'll, he'll, come, back He's and, coming. he'll come back and do that. It's a, just a slight complication of having to deal with the sight screen from time to time in the meanwhile. It might... Uh, might, might take multitasking mm. to a new level if he was both on commentary duties and moving the side screen uh, from side to side. But uh, both of uh, uh, them seem to have settled on where the side screen position is. The batsmen are presumably uh, happy with where it is. The question is as to whether or not will Tim Moses be happy uh, with the next delivery he's about to face. Yeah, in the bowler comes another really confident through the area, through the sort of cover region, drives really well, Tim gets his foot out and drives. Still an update. On the scorecard in terms of the bowlers. Tim Moses comes in, clips the leg side a bit uppish, but into the gap. Possibly going for two, yet Callum Guess is quick between the wickets. He'll get a to Tim Moses' long stride between the wickets. So I think the new bowler is Drew Brearley, who I'm not entirely convinced played in the previous match. Let's see if he um, was on. The, was, was he in there? I think Drew Drew Brearley, where are we now? Oh, yes, he was. Uh, came in at number five and was uh, uh, stumped by Bowers when he was uh, so wide ball uh, there. performing with the bat. And let's have a look at his... Uh, he didn't bowl in the la last time around, I think. I think that's what's... Oh, no, that's wrong. We'll send a bowlers. Hang on a moment. Where are we going now? Let's have a look. Uh, no, he didn't He didn't bowl last time around, which is interesting. So chosen this time around. To, Tim Moses punching on the back foot for a single on the offside. The scoreboard ticking around to 37 for uh, for two now. Panic too much. Oh, there we are. Got it on screen as well for you, which is good news. So Callum Guest on strike after the last was a single and comes again nice into the offside, not to run. Comes probably again. Oh, an edge from Callum Guest. It's going to come down fine here. The grass will a, hold that up. Yeah, a bit of a chase on, but I think the uh, the bowl is always going to win that with the moisture uh, which is on the grass at this ple ple present time. Cambridgeshire now 40 for two into uh, the eighth over. This uh, score is uh, moving along steadily. Different uh, cast, if you like, at the uh, the top of the uh, top of the order today. Rob uh, directing a, a gentleman away from uh, the camera, and he decided to walk right in front of it uh, during his process of getting out of the way. Uh, not to worry, though. If somebody might be able to recognise him if they're a regular <laughs> here at the uh, Bedford Cricket Club. You never know. I'm just looking at the towering height of Tim Moses. Mm. The um, off strike this time. Yeah, and the bowler comes to Callum Guest, driven down the ground. And it's straight down the ground to look like the opening bowler. Wilson home, throws in, and just a single to Callum Guest. Tim Moses back on strike. So Norfolk going well in the other games, keep, keeping up that rate of, 40, of uh, six and over, 42 without loss. Off seven. Because we don't know what's going to happen when, when Hertfordshire bat, of course, a little later on, which will take place around yeah. about the same time as Bedfordshire take the field here. As the ball comes into Tim Moses, again driven into, oh, it's a misfield, driven through cover. Misfield probably 
didn't cost a run anyway. They only ran a single. Callum Guest back on strike. So here's a question, Ollie. If Cambridgeshire do win this match, when and where is finals day? The bowler comes in, bowls, kind of get into the pitch and into the leg side for a single. Yes, yeah, so finals day is usually at the back end of August. So I think last year it was around like the 25th maybe of August. And I think it might have been at Wormsley Career Club. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a big day. Big day in the minor counties calendar, definitely. Does this mean we have to pack more uh, sausage rolls and scotch eggs? <laughs> <laughs> yep, schedule permitting. Oh, and Tim has his chips in the air and he's gone. Again, probably just getting stuck in the pitch a bit. Callum and Guest and, and Tim are just a look at the wicket and, and just stay between each other. But, yep, another wicket, I think, caught by Andy Reynoldson in the cover region. And Tim Moses goes without really troubling the scoring once again. Yeah, not such a good day. Had a good day yesterday, you were saying, Ollie. Mm. Very uh, good day not, yesterday. Uh, not the case today, unfortunately, for Moses. Uh, very, uh, very well, scored, I think, uh, uh, it's 10 runs altogether, I think, to uh, uh, to his uh, name today. All of them uh, in singles. But, uh, that's a, a bit of a blow for Cambridge here. Callum Guest still there. And uh, who's that coming out to uh, uh, to join Callum? Is that is that Craig? Or is I think that, it might uh, be jo um, our, our expert commentator, uh, Josh Smith, earlier uh, on. Josh. Josh has got a game in the second, <laughs> second match. That's what we like to hear. Well, obviously... Uh, because he's been with us early on for our first match, is going to uh, do very well today. How has he been doing so far this season? Yeah, really well for Peter. He scored 511 runs for Peterborough Town, which is in the North Ants Prem. Uh, 14 innings, 511 runs, 450s to his name, with a best of 97 not out. So very close to one of those converting to 100. He uh, is averaging for just under 40 as well. So going pretty well. And uh, as we said before, adds another option with the ball with his offspin. I could uh, prove uh, quite welcome uh, when Bedfordshire uh, start to bat in, um, well, I suppose, in uh, round, round about, um, so I'm just trying to do some quick math here, 13 overs time, <laughs> it's with the eighth <laughs> over uh, at the moment. Bedfordshire bowler in again, full length, Josh Smith comes forward to it and hits, gets to the pitch of the ball and hits on the full. Two of the man sweeping on the offside for a single, just dealing in singles at the minute. Again, obviously the boundaries are, Pretty important, but it's not a bad thing. You saw in the last thing they managed to keep the scoreboard ticking quite nicely. Yeah, that's uh, very, very useful to, uh, to to keep that scoreboard moving. Not this time, though. A dot ball to finish the over. We will get the uh, update on who this bowler is when the scoreboard is updated to see who got out to him, Moses. You realise, of course, we've got three scoreboards to contend with this time. <laughs> we have the one, uh, the official Bedford Cricket Club scoreboard. I'm presuming that this one here, which we're uh, taking off of the Play Cricket uh, website, is uh, linked to the same scoreboard. It's just that the updates don't go in uh, quite as often as everybody would like. And, of course, along the bottom of the screen, you'll see uh, the score as well. It's uh, currently showing the updated score, 44 uh, for three for, uh, for Cambridgeshire. Ready to uh, to start the uh, next little over. There's a almost like a, a perfectly shaped grey cloud that surrounds the ground, and there's blue sky all around it. But uh, yeah, but it's it's moving across, so I don't think we're going to get any break here let's at the moment. Up. I'm pleased to say, but you're quite right. In fact, the, there's bluer sky where the cloud is heading to, uh, but hopefully there'll be a bluer sky behind the cloud as well. Oh, and I think it's Andy Reynoldson coming in now to bolt. The, uh, the skipper, by that time, a, a bit of a, a swish side-off stunt from Josh. I got a the couple keeper. of spits and spots of rain on my wrist at that uh, at that mm. point. Reynolds in again, just back for length. Hit on the back foot to uh, long on. And a single to Josh Smith. 45 for three of 8.2. Yeah, Josh has been pushed up the order because he was listed as the number 11 on the scorecard. But uh, coming in after the departure of uh, Tim Moses, who fell to Drew Brearley. Yeah, it was, it was Andy Reynoldson who, who did catch that last wicket. Yeah, I think, I think Josh Smith, he might open the batting or bats very high up the order for Peterborough on a Saturday in the North Hans Prem. So he would have been at number 11 for just paperwork reasons. I'd not, imagine, uh, exactly. Uh, not based on the skill that we know him to have. Yeah. Oh, Callum Guest potentially getting run up there. A bit of a mix of communication. Outside edge from... <laughs> From Josh Smith and the, the Beverly bowler Andy Reynolds having a good old laugh because it was a terrible throw and it really was that possibly could have caused a run out and ran out Callum Guest, but it was a poor throw. The same fielder, I believe, who dropped 
Tim Moses. Wasn't really a costly catch in the end because he departed soon after. And now another single to Josh Smith as he just picks it, plonks it down to a long on. Plonk? Is that a, a, a regular know. cricketing term? Probably not. There isn't is now. You can make up a lot of words when you comment on cricket, I think. Andy Reynoldson in again. Bowls just that slingy action. Hit onto the leg side by Callum Guest. And just for another single, bit of a misfield, but they don't come back for the second. A Bedfordshire field, it was across that like a whippet, wasn't he? Mm. It was just uh, a ball landed and uh, not not particularly near him, but he was the nearest fielder. And uh, in he ran and uh, threw that across back to the bowler. Yeah, it's great how they attack the ball, isn't it? They really do run at it with, with speed. So a bit of a committee meeting in the middle between the Bedfordshire skipper, opening bowler, and another member of the side. Callum Guest and Josh Smith of Cambridge having a bit of a chat themselves. So it is Josh Smith's debut today in the in the T20 for Cambridge. Made his first appearance in the in the white ball 50 over competition a week or so ago against Norfolk. But his T20 debut today. It's two debutants. We seen we saw Tim Moses make his debut last time at Sawston. Picked up his first wicket today. But uh, Josh Smith handed a, a theoretical first cap in his T20 today. We're two runs away from the first 50, and I'm kind of um, wondering as to how that compares with the length of time that it took during the first innings. This, to me, feels a little bit slower. Yeah, I think it was in four overs last time, so we're now already at... Well, we're now already at just in, in the... Just, just finished the uh, the ninth over. Just start of the tenth. So it does look like it's going to be a passing shower. Yeah, I think it is. There's certainly some blue sky. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they're going off. In fact, even though we're getting a bit of rain, it actually looks quite brighter in the centre there. Yeah, in comes um, comes the bowler once again for Bedfordshire. And uh, they very smartly run to another midfield for Bedfordshire. And in Josh Smith comes through for the second. It's it's Drew, Drew Brearley. I was going to say Drew Brearley still bowling. Or they, they put in another one just to confuse us. <laughs> Was actually also Andy Reynoldson. Is, yeah, that was uh, the, the bold, skipper from the other end. Well. Yeah, skipper from the other end, and this must be Drew Brilly here. Okay, still. rolling through. Oh, and Caller Josh Smith comes to the pitch. The ball and slogs that through to the leg side just for a single. Norfolk, by the way, are currently fifty-nine for one against Hertfordshire in uh, in their match. That's after ten overs, so halfway house, pretty much uh, level, maybe slightly ahead of us by an over or so uh, in Harpenden, where that match against Hertfordshire taking place this afternoon. Yeah, so just, just, just dipped under that six and over, right? not by much, and obviously lost the wicket as well. But you don't know what the wicket's going to be like. He's had some rain as well. It might be a, a good total, about 120, 130. I mean, James Williams said that 150 was a good total here. They were 30 above par. When they got the 180 in the first innings, as, uh, Josh Smith goes through for another single. Pretty tight bowling from Bedfordshire. Not many boundaries. I can't remember the last time there was a boundary. No, there's far fewer boundaries this time around. Those uh, those trees have been uh, somewhat safe, as have the cars to our right. Yeah, and the rain just picks up a little bit more as Callum Guess hits into the leg side. It is bizarre, uh, actually. Single. There is there is bright sunshine, yet at the same time. Uh, we're, we're seeing some rain falling. I don't think there's going to be not even a conversation between the umpires at opposite stumps at the moment. So, uh, no, I think they want to get this game done. Yeah, umpire, umpire Dobbs just sort of nonchalantly uh, uh, walking back behind the wicket. Uh, his comrade in arms, umpire Medland, is going out at uh, square to keep an eye on the line as the bowler comes in from the Peter Allen end at the uh, start of uh, this particular uh, over. So in comes Andy Reynoldson again. Sling, he actually stops in his mark. He's dropped the ball. <laughs> He's dropped the ball. It's a dead ball. The umpire waving his arms from side to side to indicate that. And he comes again. False start for Reynoldson. And he comes left arm. Driven by Callum Guest into sort of the cow corner area along the ground and long on. Comes around to pick it up. It's just a single once again. Is that rain I'm seeing blowing against the trees there? I thought for a moment it was dust, but I don't actually think it is that. It's sort of like a mm. mini shower within a shower. But uh, the rain certainly clearing over now and uh, heading to, to our left. Oh, Josh, that's a lovely shot. Josh Smith brings up the reverse sweep to Andy Reynoldson. It's gone down towards his boundary, but it just stops up short. He almost made it through that time. Uh, yeah, just not, not quite. Yeah, I think it was uh, 
the same fielder who dropped the uh, the catch in the for Tim Moses. Once again, a busy man. The ball follows you around some days. In comes Andy Reynoldson once again. Yeah, there's nowhere, Josh, ooh, nowhere Josh. to hide really, even even in such a small ground as we see here at Bedford. Yeah, Josh Smith going for the traditional, say traditional more common sweep there, but just missed out. Andy Reynoldson coming in again then. Josh Smith looking to try and accelerate a bit. By the looks of it, single into the leg side though. So the fielder's cap comes off in the wind. So 59 for three into the 11th over. Reynoldson comes in again. Can't get slaps down the ground. It must, well, must have hit Reynoldson's hand or, or ankle or something and it's stopped it just behind him. He managed to get through for a single. I don't worry, sir. We'll edit it out later. <laughs> Live video stream cricket. Andy Reynoldson in. Reverse sweep again from Josh Smith. And this looks to, again, it might hold up in the grass. It has a similar position. Slightly square, and they've come back for two once again. So he's looking to get his full repertoire of shots as Josh Smith. The ball doesn't have enough oomph on it at any time, does it? It's being held up by the, the slightly damp... Slightly long grass. I use the term slightly long grass quite loosely because in the grand scheme of things, it's actually a pretty cut uh, compared, certainly compared to my lawn at home. <laughs> but I know that they weren't able to give it a final cut yesterday because of the weather here. So maybe slightly longer than they would have liked. Mm -hmm. And that's impeding the progress of the ball, which is giving the fielders a chance to catch up with it. It will be, of course, near enough the same for both sides, maybe dry out a little, but not probably not uh, that much between the two innings. Yes, yeah, spinner's been the way once again, isn't it? We've only seen one, I think, pace bowler, another spinner into the attack now. I think it was the... And coming just in front of our camera here down at Long On. Might be able to see the edge of his floppy hat in the picture. So in comes the Bedfordshire bowler, another left arm spinner, and Callum Guest chips that into the leg side. It's a more elegant shot into towards cow corner, and they're going to come back for two pretty comfortably. Ooh, just almost the throw hit Josh Smith. Yes, our bowler in the floppy hat, who was in front of our commentary uh, position here, who just nipped across and to cut that ball off, and did uh, very well indeed to do so. Yeah, so in comes the bowler once again, and Callum Guest just. Rocks on the back foot to play into the leg side will just be a single. In comes the field of George Darla, I think, the man out there. Singles all counting, though. I think 66 for three now at Cambridgeshire in the 12th over. It's 20 over, T20 game. And that's a great shot from Josh Smith, and I think it might have just bounced before the rope it did. It's yeah. four for Josh Smith, punching it over cover for four. Umpires at signalling a, a, a four on that, hopefully, or hopefully for Cambridgeshire at least. That will be uh, the start of uh, maybe a sequence of boundaries. We haven't seen uh, quite so many. I think just the uh, three fours uh, beforehand. Yeah, Josh Smith just playing that down for another single. It's the first boundary we've seen in a long, long while, isn't it? So the score 71 for three. Off in the 12th, comes the bowler again. Oh, and Callum Guest goes to sweep that. It will just be a single out to the fielder on the leg side. Callum Guest always looking for the second. Because he's back down to come again, but Josh Smith refusing by not looking. The first 50, we're on to, uh, to 71 for three now, but uh, the 50 came up. Comes the bowler just short, and that bounce again. Probably would have been a wide, he left it, but no run. Yeah, the 50 came up on 56 balls in this innings. You compare that to uh, Cambridge's other innings today in the first match uh, when the 50 came up after 24 balls. So quite a difference there. Mm. Certainly this looks like to be a lower scoring game. I think probably more similar to... I think a, a par on this score is probably somewhere in between Bedfordshire and Cambridge's first innings scores so probably looking at 140 150 that's probably um ab about right and the uh, 13th is over so probably about a third well probably that is a third of uh, this particular uh, innings left we'll have to see what kind of score 
uh, that Cambridgeshire are able to post for Bedfordshire. Remember, Cambridgeshire have to win uh, this match and also hope Norfolk uh, do over Hertfordshire. And you Reynolds in, in there and uh, Callum Guess on the back foot punching towards Cow Corner. A slip means they come back for the second. So a good partnership, I think, for this for Cambridgeshire so far. The last wicket falling it seemed to be a while ago now. Andy Reynolds in. Callum Guess hitting the ball down to long on. Bounces in front of him and just for a single. So the last wicket fell at 43. So a partnership of 30 for these two. Much needed is the partnership. And they lost those three fairly quick wickets. A space of about 20-odd 20, 20 runs. Yeah, these two uh, beginning to uh, motor slightly, trying to pick up uh, the pace a little bit. Oh, dear. And there's a run out there, and Josh Smith is running. Yeah, he's gone. Callum Guest had, had set off, and Josh Smith turned and looked at him, and uh, Callum Guest was already probably half, if not three quarters of the way down the wicket. Josh turned and ran, and uh, as long as the throw was okay, he was always going to be left short, and he was. That'll teach us to talk about fall of wickets. And partnerships, know. I know. Absolutely. It's now 74 uh, for four in the, 30, in the 13th over. Uh, but, but up until then, they were beginning to pick up the pace. Do you think they'll continue to do so when the new batsman comes in? See, he uh, just crosses actually now uh, with, uh, with Callum. It's the new batsman uh, making his way uh, to uh, the middle. Yeah, Craig Park, the man, to join Callum Guest out in the middle. I think... Um, I think, mean, obviously, Craig Park will take a bit of time to settle in. He did in the first match. If we talk about his strike rate being around that sort of 70, 70 ish mark. So I think Callum Guest will probably be the one trying to put the foot on the accelerator if he can of his next few years. But they'll just look to try and build partnerships. I think. I think they'll probably take a 140 score, 150 score. And they often do say it's not, not a mathematical uh, point to make, but they often say you can double the score at 12, is often what. The, the, you finish on a T20 match with wickets in hand, though. Punches the gloves with uh, Josh Smith before he uh, takes his uh, place at the crease. And so Callum, Callum facing now. And he gets that bottom hand whip into it onto the leg side. He hits so well it'll just be a single. Since the early flurry, we haven't seen many walk across the camera. Andy Reynolds in then to Craig Park for his first ball. Just bounced up a bit to black down into the ground for no run. The brightest of sunshine now, which we haven't seen for uh, that long, have we? But uh, now, now back, shining over the Bedford Cricket Club. Reynolds in again. Park plays it for a single and they come back for a two. That's really good running if they can get home. Yeah, it is brilliant running. Knocked into the leg side and, and just a quick two to finish the over. So 77 then for four at uh, the end of the uh, 13th over. 12 overs passed. There we go. 13th over just clicked around on the main main scoreboard there. And uh, maybe they will be up for that, uh, that 140 total, uh, providing they don't lose too many more wickets. Um, Ollie, in terms of batting to come, uh, by the looks of things, uh, we've still got uh, still Sayer and Williams and Bowers and uh, then then Seabrook and then finally House and Craig uh, to, to to end things up with. So uh, uh, some decent batting in there still to come. Let's hope these two can build a momentum once more. Oh, that's a great big threat going straight down the ground as going behind the sight screen and uh, landing into the trees for four. Yeah, Tom Brett, the bowler. Come back on. He's already dropped a catch today. Won't be reminding of that. First over went for f nine runs. And uh, he's already had four off this first over. Lovely shot from Callum Guest using his feet to uh, get to the pitch, the ball. And then it's straight down the ground for four. Norfolk is 67 for two after 12. So a similar position, really, to Cambridgeshire in that sense. Just a few runs behind. Lost another wicket. The run rate has slowed down a little bit. Of course, Norfolk need to beat Hertfordshire and then Cambridgeshire need to win here for Cambridgeshire to qualify for finals day in August. 
I just think if anything's in it, actually in it for Norfolk if they win, other than um, probably a few t um, telephone calls and texts and tweets of congratulations uh, from some of the members of the Cambridgeshire uh, team, assuming Cambridge are able to overturn uh, Bedfordshire here. One of the other uh, fielders, Ollie, over the uh, over the side there is uh, just sort of rest resting, is sitting down, sort of stretching out a bit. Yeah, had a clear a. A long day. These 2020 overs clearly knackering. Well, it's the equivalent of like almost like a 50 over game. It is exactly it? Yeah. the old uh, old 40 over Sunday league game when you've got these two 2020 matches back to back, which seems to be the format throughout, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. The, uh, uh, this season, it seems like a curious way to do it, but I guess it's practical. Yeah, Tom Britton and Bowles, good length hit under the legs of Callum Guest to the boundary. Will they come back for two? They're looking to, but no, just a single. Yeah, it is the the, the double game format in a day seems to be one that they all favour and it's been it for a few years now I think and obviously it happened this year and it's just like playing a, I guess a 40 over 40 over match which but makes it strange but I guess you get more more breaks it's almost like four quarters isn't yeah, it yeah yeah bread in again to Park and it's a thick edgish cut to Gully get through to a single it's interesting though because a lot of these guys probably would have played yesterday as well so maybe a few tired legs towards the end of today that's heavy going. They, they would have played, would they, for their, their local, local sides rather yeah, than their clubs. The county. Exactly, yeah. In comes Tom Brett again. Full length ball. Callum comes to the pitch. I should stop calling him Callum. Callum Guest comes to the pitch. And they first name terms with the batsmen. <laughs> what's, what's happening here? Yeah. Mr. Guest. It's another two runs to his total. Clearly a very keen runner. We saw that with the run out with Josh Smith looking to keep the scoreboard ticking. They're not hitting boundaries. That's what they want to do. And uh, I don't think Josh Smith really fancied that run. Um, or maybe you could say there wasn't a run there and Callum set off like a steam train. But we'll have to ask our expert, Sam Rippington, when he turns up in a minute. But looking for another two now. Oh, and that was tight, I think. Tom Brett didn't realise how tight that was. Just picked up the ball. Didn't have a go at the stumps. Craig Park was sliding his bat in there. Pretty tight. Slowly prodding his, uh, his bat on the, on the ground as he walks past. Bread in bowls, a full length ball, and Callum's gone for the sweep and muted appeals for Edward W's. The wicketkeeper wanted to try and get through these overs. Not out. No yeah, wicketkeeper just, just shot his hand up really there. Didn't really do much. Nobody else seemed to be particularly interested in that. They, they took the run, and that was, that was kind of it really. 87 uh, for four now in the 15th over. It's Cambridge 105 Radio, video coverage of this T20 uh, Unicorns match between Bedfordshire and Cambridgeshire from Bedford uh, Cricket Club. A bright sunshine now, which is possibly uh, the best we've seen all day. And you can uh, hardly blame the uh, spectators, of which there are plenty, for uh, for hanging around various uh, pushchairs, prams, uh, youngsters, uh, quite a collection of cars around the outfield. They haven't come into danger, but they're again in this second of the two T20 matches which we've covered today. Uh, there hasn't been quite so many boundaries, but by some distance. Yeah, there hasn't. Lack of pace on the ball means there's less boundaries and they really are just dealing in, in ones and hopefully twos. And they've got another here swept by Craig Park. It's interesting looking at the uh, the other game, Hertfordshire, Norfolk. Norfolk lost their third wicket, 81 for three the end of the 14th so very similar <laughs> it's very much mirroring uh our 89 for four isn't it by yeah. the looks of things new batsmen at the crease tom new and matthew plater are there on seven and two respectively park looking to go into our outside into the offside at the astro turf one bounce and just through to a single it's really that's fun it really difficult to I guess generate that power and try and get over the ropes because there's that lack of pace a in the bowling and a in, and b in the wicket I'm just noticing on a monitor here, actually, you've got um, a couple of bicycles in the background belonging to uh, the, the spectators and a couple of youngsters as well alongside them. Yeah, Reynolds in again and a big trying to heave that from outside off stump onto the leg side did Callum. Trying to sort of get down and sweep it. Andy Reynolds doing a good job here for when he's <laughs> Earlier it was the ball he dropped and now he's knocked the bells off. So uh, another dead ball signalled. We signalled by the umpire. Yeah, it's not doing too well on that. I'm very disappointed. These aren't they like the flashy, lighty 
bales that we've been seeing. <laughs> zing bales. In, in zing the, bales. I think so. Is zing the manufacturer? Maybe. Or is uh, maybe. Zing, zing apparently what it does? I think they might be the manufacturer. Or, uh, or both. Yeah, the only fault with the um, uh, with those particular types of stumps, the zing, zing bales, is that they don't seem to come off very often. <laughs> it's difficult for bowlers as, uh, enough with them how how hard batsmen hit the ball nowadays, but let's make it more difficult. Another let's dead ball signal there, I noticed, from uh, umpire Dobbs. Yeah, because the, the bales were knocked off. Yeah, it's difficult enough being a batsman, uh, being, a, being a bowler at the minute, and even more so if the bales don't come off. Callum guessed, I think, rocking back on his back foot and really looking to pull that. They're really, really trying to capitalise on these short balls and try and find the boundary. But uh, That didn't sound particularly neat coming off the bat there, did it? No. It was almost like... Uh, Two two noises quickly to get very quickly together, rather than that the one solid solid noise as the ball went onto the bat. Yeah, not a clean strike. Craig Park facing now and pulls again, and, and that is nicely timed. That really raced away from the bat, but it's another single. Yeah, Field is well placed. The ninety-two for four now, and the fifteenth over. Another slap on the back foot into that leg side long on oh, they have a go for two on this one Ooh. Oh, slide just about got the bat uh, down over the line in time it's still there as well as his feet stuck up in the air <laughs> Craig Park it is that's twice now he's ran his bat and that time he really went all into it and slid in but the fielder on the on the leg side boundary was sweeping in, and long on converged long on picked it up and a, a great throw it was came back for the second managed to get home in the end So Norfolk continue to lose wickets, 83 for four after 15 overs. So they'll be looking to try and accelerate now. It looks like a, a similar situation here in that the the wicket's probably not offering a lot of pace. Uh, we need, we need, we need uh, Norfolk to win uh, against uh, Hertfordshire to help Cambridgeshire along here. We don't want any Norfolk turkeys if we can help it. Fingers crossed. Pakistan also underway against uh, India in reply. 11 without loss. Uh, with uh, two two overs gone, they're chasing 336 for five, which was the total at Old Trafford a little earlier on. Uh, Rob just uh, moving a gentleman uh, dressed in, a, well, two bits of a suit, really. He's got a jacket and trousers that don't particularly match. Uh, he's got a, uh, a cap as well. And uh, just uh, being pointed out that uh, we've got a camera here, which is uh, bringing people uh, video coverage from Cambridge 105 Radio of this match this afternoon. Looks to be an injury, doesn't it, on the field? Either an injury or a, a lost spike back. Yeah, there's something going on there. The umpire is taking a little bit of uh, notice of that. Umpire Medland uh, looking looking down on what's, uh, uh, what's, what's going on. A few other conversations taking place uh, amidst the fielders. A gentleman with his arms folded is walking around the boundary boundary rope. In fact, you'll probably see him in a moment if you keep an eye uh, on the video picture. Will he just uh, put a long shot in? Oh, there he goes. Uh, well done, sir. It's quite interesting. I do a lot of the conferences and things which, which get filmed. And I, I can't remember the last time I saw um, a sort of a head or a, a face in, <laughs> in front of that. And the camera's not a particularly dissimilar angle. Have a quick single there for Cambridgeshire, but easy in this time. Yeah, it was totally well, no one seemed to walk in front of it at Sawston. We had a perfectly placed by the side screen. It's a very similar position. No one seemed to walk in front of it, perhaps. I don't know why. Maybe it was... It's very strange. Maybe simply as, as, <laughs> simply as more people uh, watching perhaps. and then consequently walking. Perhaps. Oh, my goodness. This is a bit of a skyer. A shot from Callum Guest. It's gone over the rope and it has gone for six. Andy Reynoldson couldn't quite get round to it. And uh, you hear the Cambridgeshire players clapping there as the first six. That's our first six, isn't it, of the innings? Of the innings, it moves the score to 101 for four off 50, off into the 16th. Can I say that Rob has been quite sharp on the on-screen score here? Ooh. Uh, bringing them up uh, quickly at the, uh, the bottom of your screen at uh, 101 for four. So no run um, after that delivery. I don't know if a Tom Brett seems to be moving slightly gingerly. I think he was on the floor, perhaps maybe an issue with his boot, but he doesn't need to be moving that freely. He's two overs for 19 before this one. There's been a six in it as well, so quite expensive. Unlike the first match, very tight in that game. Oh, and Callum going for the big one again, side edge onto his boot. That might have been coming our way had he made connection. So 
situation, Norfolk is 83 for four into the 16th over as far as we're aware. Cambridgeshire moved on a little bit. 101 for four, and there's an appeal there for something. And again, only the umpire went up. Um, the only the wicketkeeper went up, sorry. We muted whether it was a... Must have been going for a stumping. Yeah, 15 overs have now passed at Harper in that game uh, between Norfolk and Hertfordshire. So Norfolk, I guess, will be uh, hoping they might be able to get 130, 140 out of that game, maybe even a little bit more if the cricket gods are on their side. That's a lovely shot from Cunningham. Guess hit down the ground straight. That's a beautiful shot. That really is straight down the ground. High elbow past the batsman and down for four. It's an expensive over for Tom Brett. Game of shit, move on to 105 for four. Yeah, I wonder if they'll um, bowl him again, actually, in the uh, the next over. Or maybe they'll they'll move on to. Uh, would, would they? They have. They must. Do they have a safe bowler in the, in, in the side? They could. Uh, I'm sure they'll they could find turn, someone. Turn to, if only just to do a, do a couple of overs to, because these two now are beginning to just just put on the scores a little bit, aren't they? Yeah, I just wonder whether that sort of sun is maybe drying the pitch out a bit. Maybe can it? I wouldn't say slightly easier, but Callum's getting to the pitch. The ball. And there was a few sort of floated up, full full of pitch deliveries there that Callum got to. It shows if you can get to the pitch, the ball. Well, that's helping, that's helping Cambridgeshire now. It could have very well help Bedfordshire mm. when they, they begin uh, their batting in five or so overs time. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, a lot of the success from the, the spinners in the first match was from sort of just back of a length short ball, darting it in and keeping low. But Tom Brett sort of floating up there a bit and, and a bit overpitched. So the first spectator of the day walks behind the camera. He also gave you a sort of mini thumbs up, I noticed, as he went by, as a pushing uh, a push chair, clearly on uh, on Father's Day duties in all senses today. <laughs> so uh, yeah, was wise to the fact that uh, we've got a telecast going on. So Tom Brett has joined us down at... Looks to be third man. He's come up into the circle, so... He's popping his glasses back on. It's another tall one, isn't he? They are, yeah. I think still think Tim towers above him. Craig Puck, oh, bottom edge of the bat. And they, they're taking a run anyway. Look at that. Great running from Callum. Knew the situation. Well, they saw the parry from the weak keeper, and, and he was right away to get the single. School board moves on to 106 for four. So Norfolk... Decent over off there, 13 off the over, but did lose another wicket. 97 for five with four overs to go. So batsmen are going to have to come in and tee straight from the off. Callum Guest trying a, a ramp shot there by the looks of it. Missed that, out. That was very fast. Yeah, shot along the ground as well. It's kind of, kind of skidded and there's sort of a, a, a mini puff of dust <laughs> uh, just as the ball pitched. After the delays, we've had a bit of moisture will be a good touch. I would say Cambridge will be happy with 130, 140. Anything think that's a bonus. And Norfolk similar. Oh, an inside edge in Craig Park this time. Come through for the single. Another run onto Callum Guest total. Another run onto Cambridge years total. Wickkeeper has come up to the stumps. That Norfolk game is now 97 for five after 16 overs. Uh, Norfolk against Hertfordshire. Norfolk uh, must win. If uh, Cambridgeshire are to uh, finish uh, with a chance of T20 finals, there, of course, Cambridgeshire have to do a bit of work as well and win this match against Bedfordshire as well. Yeah, uh, Penny, the thoughts of skipper James Williams, similar occasion last year. Unfortunately, could have qualified but lost the game against Bedfordshire. Shot from Callum, probably be maybe a couple or just a single into the offside. How will he be feeling now? He's in a situation where he'll probably feel. If these two can stick together and they post a good first thing total, he'll be confident he can win this game, but this year it's not in his hands. So how will he be feeling? I'm sure he'll be nervous jigging of the knees will be going on. I dare say. Here comes the Beverly Bowler once again to Craig Park. Cut away on the back foot to point, but they scamper through for a single. 110 then for four. After in the 17th over now. It's, um, it's a free over to go. It's Rob Sayer time, isn't it? He's oh, very, very possibly. He's in the shed. He's in the pavilion still. I imagine these two will probably be going hard with, with all that batting to come. The likes of James Williams, the likes of Jamie Seabrook, Rob Sayer. 
these two will really start to probably go for their shots now with three overs to go. It's kind of nothing to lose territory, really, is it? They want to build a score as, as high as possible. It's 109 now, so a reasonable chance, I suppose, of adding another another 30 or so to the total. Well, they look to go 8 and over in the last three overs. It was 24, so looking at one, 135. They can get up to one, 140. That'd be perfect. If they can get go at, if they can go at 10 and over, that's a bonus. Tricky on this pitch, it looks so far, and that's chipped in the air. It's going to find the gap in between the fielder on the boundary and the field and the infield. Frustration, but they come through to us for a second. Craig Park facing once again. This time hit toward, more towards the list. Oh, a diving effort. Oh, my goodness. Hit the uh, the side of the wall of the pavilion there. What an effort that is from the fielder down here. Tom Brett, the man with a, an outstretching arm, but it's gone for six. That's all Cambridge should care about. This is the point where we need to stick our feet in the air. <laughs> it's on Nelson at 111. So another good over for Norfolk. 17 overs gone there. They managed to get another 7 from, I believe, 104 for 5 or 3 overs to go. Similar position with Cambridgeshire. Cambridgeshire, if they just put the foot on the accelerator in this over, for 6 for Craig Park. Can Norfolk do the same? Park comes down the ground again, and that's another 4. It's a lovely shot. Down the ground, 4 runs. You'd have seen that perfectly. From the camera. Yeah, bounced and then headed into the trees where I think one, two, three, uh, three fielders, as fielders plus uh, two um, spectators are also going to watch the action in the trees as the, uh, the ball is retrieved. So Cambridge on 121 for four. They could be on for a total of 140 or thereabouts off of their uh, 20 overs. Ball is thrown uh, back, and uh, these stretchers uh, by by the fielders. So Tom Brett has come stood in front of us here at Long On. It looks to be Craig Potts' region, but he's gone over to the leg side band this time. Oh, on the fielder. Yeah, that's gone over for four there. The fielder sort of uh, outstretched his hands, uh, not uh, not particularly tall. So uh, it was a tricky uh, try. Never, I don't think that was ever on as far as the catch was concerned. Uh, might have hoped that uh, he could have saved. Uh, saved a few runs, but uh, it just, just bounced and went over the uh, the boundary rope and between two parked cars. So boundaries are flowing for Cambridgeshire. Flicked into the leg side. Coming back for two is Craig Button. Callum Guest. They should get there. They will get there. So a good over so far for Cambridgeshire. We said they're looking to accelerate, and that's just what they've done. 130 for four now in the 18th over. There's another big shot way over. That's a six shot. on the roof of the pavilion uh, falling down. And so a couple of the uh, spectators in front of the pavilion <laughs> are taking cover as if that was going to do any good of the kick cricket ball on the, he on the head. It looks so. like the Cambridgeshire County Career Club chairman, Keith Coven, has just had a tile miss his head by must have been a millimetre. A couple of tiles fell down off that. Maybe moss as well, but blooming heck. What a hit from Craig Park that was. This will be quite a party now, actually going to going to check as to to the state of the uh, the roof, but uh, they'll be able to glance across to the scoreboard and see. Uh, but it's 136 for four at the end of the 18th over. I think now we can start talking about scores of 150 plus, can't we? Particularly if we have those final two overs uh, or anything like that last one. Yeah, well, the acceleration. This has been even key for Camishier and just shows. Maybe does it show the pitch is getting slightly easier to bat on? I think the key is that they get into the pitch of the ball. I think the problem is it's going to be slightly easier to bat on as well for Bedfordshire when they uh, take up shortly. Norfolk, incidentally, 114 uh, for six now. Stepping up the ante. Robbers just angled, I think, the camera on top of Flossie. Is it to, uh, towards the pavilion where that ball went? A gentleman with a pint of beer, actually, enjoying his, uh, his Sunday afternoon. Not yet. <laughs> oh, the fancy beer myself, actually, <laughs> considering I'm not actually driving back. It's quite good. In comes the Bedfordshire bowler now. Callum Guest facing Canny Joy in the party. Oh, what an effort for Brett. Tom Brett. That was a thick outside edge from Callum Guest. And he leapt back and he got a palm to it. Almost like tipped it over the bar if he was a goalkeeper. 
Yeah, well, Brett has obviously saved a couple of runs there, but wasn't able to uh, to do the catch. Got a, a pat on the behind um, from uh, one of his fellow uh, Bedfordshire players uh, for his efforts there. Certainly saved a, a couple of runs, taking the score to 138 for four, the 19th over. Callum running through for a single. Will he come back for a second? No, just, just the one. And looks to be... That is the 50 for Callum Guest. Very well batted. A beautiful innings of keeping the scoreboard ticking acceleration at the end and he's broken into Cambridge 105 Radio Duck. Yeah, complete contrast to his um, uh, one run in the first, first innings, uh, making up for it with that uh, splendid 50, which is really... And now helping Cambridgeshire uh, to, to motor along and set Bedfordshire a, a competitive total. wonder what we'll be talking about from the pavilion this week, Julian. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure Callum will mention it. Uh, Wednesday night at 6 on Cambridge 105 Radio. <laughs> Callum Guest getting the full repertoire of shots out now, trying a, say a reverse ramp, would you, Julian? I don't know. Didn't get a run for it. That's the key fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does seem to be blowing across the wicket. Every once in a while the wind uh, get, gets up. You can see it in the many trees which are around this uh, picturesque ground uh, just outside of central Bedford. And that should be Byers going through for a single. As the umpire signals he does. So keeping close eyes on Norfolk as well. Let's take a look at uh, the score at uh, Harpenden at the moment. 114 for six, Norfolk. After 18 overs there, so they've got uh, so be two, uh, two more. They're not able to score quite as many as Cambridgeshire have. Is that ball? Let's just skids across the players going for a couple of runs on that. Oh, really Back well with run. the wicketkeeper. Bales are off. It was the gloves. Ball was out of hand. It's a brilliant run running from Cambridgeshire. Two runs for them. And Craig Park, he is going back to... I thought for, I thought for a moment, moment that Park was heading back towards the p pavilion, but um, he was just going on a wander, really. I don't know if he was entirely sure. He was almost um, expecting himself to be declared out. But uh, I, imagine no, he, I imagine he wouldn't have seen you. probably just heard the bell. That's kind of what I'm thinking. With if, if you're going off, going off the pitch and uh, you've got your, your, your back to the umpire, then it's not, uh, not, not certain at all, really, is it? No, no. We talked about partnerships last time and... And jinxed it a bit, didn't we? But uh, almost close to the 70-run partnership now, which is a, a brilliant effort from these. So they've done really, really well for Cambridgeshire. Now just four wickets down for uh, Cambridgeshire for their 143 runs so far. We're now into the final over now. Uh, hoping to uh, make a score of at least 150, maybe even to uh, the 160 mark, and then get a few uh, boundaries here. We've certainly seen a few more boundaries in the second half of this innings than we did in the first. A decidedly quiet. A nice ending, though, so far as Callum Guest. That should be... Uh, oh, he nearly got run out there, Craig Park. You can, of course, be run out, even though... Oh, so his buys are leg buys. Almost thought he was... And a signal a wide there. Yeah, the wicket keeper picked that up very quickly and um, threw it back as best as he could. But there was nobody to uh, to back up near to the stumps, and the ball sailed by, and the uh, Cambridgeshire players got away with that one. Update from Norfolk: 120 for six going to the last over, so they'll be hoping to get up to 130 to post a competitive total for Hertfordshire. In comes the oh, Wilson home now. It's a lovely drive. It really is a sh lovely shot. Just for two runs from Craig Park. So Cambridgeshire move on to, looks to be, is that one four six for four? Yeah, I think one four six for four. They haven't added to the uh, uh, the the big scoreboard. There's on the uh, bottom we should of we the should trust Rob, you. shouldn't we? We should trust Rob. Rob is, Rob is quicker at the <laughs> moment than uh, <laughs> I noticed. No, noticed the, uh, the the speed at which Rob picked up the uh, the, the scoring on our uh, electronic scoreboard at the foot of the screen. Wilson home again, down the pitch from Park. It's straight out to the man at long off, and it'll be a single. Clearly, Rob's more of a cricket fan than he put lets on. He, he claims, must know he what's claims, going on. He claims he doesn't like the sport, but uh, his um, he was good, good very, engineer he is. He's good on the math, you see. Yeah. That's, the, that's where, it's, where its benefit is. Very quick on those two runs there, and just a single there. 147-4 into the last over of Cambridge Shears innings. Callum Guest on strike, currently on 50. Craig Park, the other man, on 40-odd. Callum Guess 
Down the leg side, it will be signaled a wide, and they've gone for the run, and Craig Park gets in. So two to the score. The wide and the run. It's the score to one four nine, I believe. Hopefully that means we'll get our 150, barring uh, a, a disaster. Should do. Should do. Of course, Wilson, I'm trying to get his Yorkers in, trying to get it right in the block hole. Might entice a full toss, though. Not that time, just back of a length, cut away into the offside. Will be, as soon as they come back for the second, this is going to be tight. And it looks to be out. He has given him. Craig Park, brilliant innings from him, giving his wicket up for the team. They're trying to get through for the second. But a superb knock. Yeah, you can't really fault that at all, can you? Just uh, doing his best to uh, get as many runs on the board as as possible for, for Cambridgeshire. 42 to him, if the score won it. It's 150, I believe, for Cambridgeshire. The first run should count. To just update and see if we've got anything from Norfolk in the meantime. We have 134 for six, so incredibly 14 off the last over for Norfolk. It's just that, I think that's just about competitive for them, and you never know what the wicket's like. No, we, we don't know. We didn't really, the, the other game at Hertfordshire early on today, they only played seven overs aside, so not really enough time to get any judgment as to how that particular wicket at Harpenden is playing. So hopefully it will have played well for Norfolk. Uh, that will be to Cambridgeshire's advantage if they're able uh, to win this match. And we'll find out what score they're going to set Bedfordshire in a very a few moments. Time. Just a couple of balls uh, left. Is it one or two balls left on this? Uh, uh, in, in a this couple over? of wides. I, I'm not sure. But yeah, the, the wides are sort of confusing the, mm. uh, the confusing the total here. Craig Park got a, a very nice round of applause there from his Cambridgeshire team. It's very much appreciate that yeah, knock. Deserved, deserved as well. So. Similar knock to Rob Sayer in the first inning, first match. He was on strike now. The new batsman. He's gone big. Didn't take him long to settle. That's six for Rob Sayer. That one might have been lost on the other side of the trees at the Peter Allen end. The uh, the fielder is just putting his hands up in the air in a kind of, I really don't know where it's gone kind, <laughs> kind of way. I think he's been told to forget about that. Look at that. The uh, umpire has managed to uh, to pull a, uh, a new ball out of his pocket. Umpire uh, meddling. That. That's one of the ones which he left in from this morning. Or whether, Looks so. Uh, whether he had a spare. I guess with one ball to go, they don't really care on the, on the condition. That's another big shot. Looks like it's going to drop short of George Darlow. It does. And they come back for the second. It's a wayward throw. And Rob Sale got home comfortably for the second run. The ball's going back to the bowler. So... Is that one more ball to go? I'm not sure anyone knows. No, it looks like the end of the innings. End of the innings. Well, a good way to end it then. Certainly that uh, six in particular and that two off of the final ball. The score has that ticked around? I think it has. To 100. I'm not quite sure if that has been added on. Uh, yeah, here we go. What's going to happen? Is the total going to change for us? I don't take... That's not a time to take the score out. 158 for five, Rob has got out, which I'm... We'll go, yeah, and we'll it go is with on, that. on the scoreboard. So 158 well. for five then uh, for Cambridgeshire against Bedford. The other match, which uh, we're keeping an eye on, as you might expect, uh, Norfolk versus Hertfordshire, 134 for six. The reason for our interest, uh, as you'll know, we're kind of looking to see whether or not, well, if, if, if Norfolk are able to beat Hertfordshire and Cambridge are able to beat Bedfordshire with a decent run rate, a net run rate, then Cambridgeshire will be through to finals day at the end of August. If they do that, of course, I guess we'll possibly have to plan some coverage for you, but we'll <laughs> see uh, what we can do. Ollie has got the uh, roving microphone and he will now uh, set out and do his best to try and catch up with some of the uh, players, as uh, or maybe the, the captain, to see what their view uh, is on how they did uh, this afternoon. A couple of uh, run-outs. I think I can uh, just about go through uh, most of the card for you, so I will do that. Uh, Hussein uh, was caught by Matt Taylor off the bowling of George uh, Darlow. Of course, Hertfordshire opening, um, not Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire opening with the spinners uh, this afternoon. Uh, for six runs, including one four. Uh, Eddie Ballard was bowled by Darlow for nine. Uh, two fours in his total. Tim Moses, big Tim Moses, caught by Andy Reynoldson off the bowling of Drew Brearley for 11. Uh, haven't got the details yet on uh, on Callum Guest. 
Uh, Josh Smith was uh, run out. We had a few run outs, actually, which uh, uh, took place uh, for 17. Uh, Craig Part was uh, run out. Uh, Momi was responsible uh, for that one. And uh, seeing if we can uh, update, don't have the, the full update uh, on the score uh, just yet. We'll maybe come back to that in a short while's time. But 158, uh, the total for Cambridgeshire uh, this afternoon. Uh, so we're halfway through now of our, our second game that we're covering on Cambridge 105 Radio. If you haven't found us before, you're very welcome. This is our special uh, video telecast via YouTube on the Cambridge 105 Radio website, the second of these two T20s uh, this afternoon. And uh, we broadcast uh, regularly on uh, 105 FM in the Cambridge area, also DAB uh, Digital Radio and with the Radio Player app. And as a cricket fan, you'll probably be interested in Ollie's From the Pavilion, which you can hear on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, also Saturday lunchtimes at 12. And after that's all uh, been done and dusted, you can catch up with that on the Radio Player app and also as an Apple podcast. So just waiting now for Ollie to uh, uh, speak to players and uh, one is approaching him now uh, so ollie all yours uh, i'm with callum now and uh, you're just saying actually nice to get some runs in front of the, the cameras 105 radio cameras and their microphones yeah every time the pressure's on i've seemed to fail so it's just nice to blink a few today um that no, was a good score on that so we're in deck so hopefully 160 is around what we were looking for so 158 is a pretty good score I was going to say how did it play because it obviously the sun's been on it probably a bit longer now it seemed to improve because you started to score a bit more freely at the end or was that just because you got to the pitch of the ball and started to find the gaps I think it was just that their middle overs I think they probably gave us a few easy runs into like the leg side they left the leg side open for a, a singles and it just meant that we could rotate strike quite freely um, and that also puts pressure on the bowler because if the bowler then knows you're going for a minimum of six and over um, one bad ball and he knows it's all of a sudden eight, nine and over and that puts an extra pressure on them and I mean and also what it meant is that it got to Parkey took an over for about 25 there and uh, also by giving us that rotation of strike it means that all it takes is one over 25 and all of a sudden we've got a really good score I was going to say and, and also because the, the amount of sort of times you rotate the strike in that middle overs it meant that you and, and Craig managed to build up a partnership and get yourself comfortable so you go big at the end Absolutely, I think um, they showed the way when actually they're bowling the power play. They had a pretty regulation field, and it was actually really difficult to score. I mean, the first over went for a maiden, um, and that was just with a regulation field. It was almost when they overcomplicated it. That's when they, they started going for leaking a few runs. So, what do you reckon then in terms of bowling for uh, the second innings? Obviously, spins the way they only bowled one pace, one one seam up in the in that innings. So, I imagine you'll probably do the same. Sam Ripton obviously missing out, and you got Josh Smith in an extra spinner. Yeah, I think it'll be a spin to win. Um, Moses, I think probably change ends obviously I, I had the luxury of bowling into the, them hitting into the wind in my first couple of overs which is uh, never nice but I think what they'll do we'll, we'll, we'll bowl Tim downhill into a bit of a breeze and uh, hopefully hit the pitch I think that's what they didn't do at the death they almost bowled a bit too uh, full uh, will it to hit the pitch with it being a bit too paced I think it'd be potentially difficult to get away yeah and it's good it gives us something to talk about on Wednesday as well on Pavilion yeah hopefully <laughs> mate, thank you well played mate back to you Julian Thank you very much, Ollie. So, Cambridge here, 158 for five. Uh, from their uh, 20 overs, another 20 still to come in a short while's time as Bedfordshire uh, launch their reply here at Bedford Cricket Club. Uh, Ollie coming in alongside me now. Uh, what do you think then so far of the uh, of, of the Cam of the Cambridgeshire performance, which we saw there? Yeah, pretty pretty good, very good. Um Took them a while to get going, but like Callum said, they bowled really well in the in the opening in opening stages, and then that that middle partnership, like we said, um, when Josh Smith got out, we cursed the partnership. But then the partnership that Craig Park and Callum Guest built was was really good. The sort of managing to get settled, like he said, those sort of nudging those singles at the time, we were thinking, is it going to be enough? But it meant they got settled and they could go big at the end, and uh, and the way they finished the match was perfect, getting the score up to one five eight. OK, so we'll see how the reply goes. And those behind us here, uh, we've got um, some sort of throwdowns that, uh, which are taking place just to uh, get everybody uh, up and ready for when uh, Cambridgeshire take the, uh, the field. How long are we, would you say, uh, away from that? 
Usually it's not too long. They usually take a, a few minutes to get sort of swapped around. You could really see them having a, a bit of a team talk to our to our left now, um, going through the stretches. Like I, said, I was going to say, a bit of stretching going on as well. But yeah. as you mentioned, some of the players, uh, not only have they played the T20 game earlier today, but they've also uh, did uh, possibly played yep. for, their, for their club side Exa yesterday exactly. as well. Yeah, so, I mean, three Sawston boys would have played played yesterday and um, two whiz peach guys would play let's say all these guys did they win guys. that's kind of what we need Sawston to know. did yeah yeah okay. exactly so yeah, they're, they're happy guys in the camp um yeah a lot of these guys would have played yesterday i, I wouldn't have thought there would probably be any of them who didn't play and um, it was all playing for club size but i mean you could say they're used to it a lot of these guys also play, play the three-day championship which means they're playing obviously three days in a trot and about 90 overs in a day so you know they could be used to it but it's just probably the bit more explosive nature that, that t20 is yeah, you went to uh, see the uh, England game on, mm. on on Friday. How was how was that? Very good, very good. Yeah, really nice day. As you can probably tell, not a good look actually. I'm probably burnt down there on, on this <laughs> side of my neck. I'm perfect this side, but yeah, very hot. And yeah, it's like uh, me, the last uh, last one of these that we covered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, it was a really good day. It was a brilliant performance from England. Comprehensive from ball one to the last. Really, sort of. I was a bit worried beforehand about West Indies pace attack and uh, and the amount of pace and bounce they could get out of the the wicket at Hampshire. But you know, England's batsmen. Did really well by restricting them to a, uh, or, or did really well considering as well the bowlers did so well restricting them to a low total in the first innings. Now yeah, the West Indies really seem to have picked up recently, don't they? Yeah. After a bit of a lull in uh, their game, they're beginning to, once they get round to being the old West Indies, <laughs> but certainly uh, improving uh, compared to what it's been perhaps in in recent years. Yeah. Well, if we take a look behind us, there is a huddle which has now developed of the Cambridgeshire players. We're still waiting uh, for the two batsmen to come out. Uh, to start the innings for Bedfordshire. It's got a bit darker here as well, but I don't think we're expecting any more rain. Certainly hope that that's uh, not going to be the case. Thumbs up uh, from Rob, which kind of suggests that uh, maybe uh, we'll miss the showers uh, this time around. They'll just pass over us. Uh, the umpires are also out in the middle. A young uh, lad on the bicycle with mat matching T-shirt and baseball cap, both in turquoise. And he uh, cycles past along on, on the outfield. Umpires are taking uh, their spots as well uh, in front of their respective wickets. So we'll get back into uh, the commentary position and describe the action to you. Looks like Josh Smith might be opening the bowling of his offspin. Tim Moses waving his arms around as well. Again, as we saw in, um, well, I guess the lesson learnt here today is uh, spin is the way forward. Slightly restricted uh, the scoring, maybe, but I think that um, I think I think it's too much to uh, to, to worry. adjusting the score on the bottom of uh, of the screen there before Bedfordshire uh, get underway with their innings. Cambridgeshire having um, uh, scored 158. The target actually 159. We'll uh, uh, swap that over in a moment or two's time. The uh, uh, the batsman is uh, already waving back to the pavilion as something uh, which has uh, been forgotten. Perhaps is after another bat or perhaps is after something else entirely. I realise that bit of uh, TV work there, Wally. I've sort of got need to replace my baseball cap <laughs> on top of, uh, underneath my headphones rather than on top. So Josh Smith starts for Cambridgeshire in bowls. Flicked into the leg side for a single. Get a few of the Scotch eggs at uh, quite a rate there, Wally. I might have to uh, go into uh, the van in a short while's time and see... Uh, see what I can uh, provide in the, uh, <laughs> in the in the ways of, of snackage. Mm. Yeah, might be tempted by some sausage rolls as well. See how many of the oh, that's better. The players walk behind the cameras. The players are sensible. Mm. Bedfordshire clearly more sensible than a certain someone in the Cambridgeshire ranks earlier on. Oh, was he a Cambridgeshire guy? Earlier on, yeah. When the no, I didn't spot that. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Josh Smith, right arm coming into bowl, hit back towards him, and a bit of a misfield, but Rob says managed to tidy up. So no run. Of course, Callum correctly pointed out as well that interestingly in the Bedfordshire match, sorry, in the Bedfordshire, when they were bowling, the first over was a maiden, 
It's a really tight ring spell. That's a chance for a wicket. Ooh. Cut away on the back foot. I think he's gone over Jamie Seabrook with a floppy hat. By the way, in the Hertfordshire Norfolk game, Hertfordshire are now back underway. Seven without loss currently uh, for them. So we'll be uh, seeing. Well, uh, from a Cambridgeshire perspective, they won't, won't want to uh, see them overtake Norfolk's 134 for six, which they scored earlier. Yeah, wickets will be key. I think if, if Norfolk can get a few early wickets, then that might that might put a bit of pressure on Hertfordshire, knowing the situation. Another run, a couple of runs to the total there. So we promised you Sam Rippington. He's still sitting there in his floppy hat. I think now his mates have gone out to field. He might pop over for a bit. I'll go grab him in a little bit. Here comes Josh Smith. Full of ball that time, and it was a poor ball. On leg stump, pulled away. Is the grass going to hold up? I think it is. I think it is. The grass is going to... Oh, and in it comes. I think I'm seeing the third dog being exercised uh, today along the uh, boundary field. This one is uh, a golden Labrador. It's on one of those little stretchy leads, which means the dog can go some distance in in front and the owners uh, walk behind and presumably a press little thing which reels it in if he gets <laughs> too carried away. Oh, Josh Smith bowls there under the bat and through to the man on the 45. It's Eddie Ballard in that baseball cap doing a few football tricks. Tim Moses into bowl now. Oh, back of a length. Can we keep a bit low? And uh, kept out. Sam Rippington eventually joining us. Grab the roaming mic, Sam. Me, is it? Yeah. Mic. You well? Yeah, you? How are you getting on? Good, thank you. Very good, very good. Finally, the sun's come out. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, a lot better now. Perfect. And what do you think the the game situation as well? Pretty happy. Must be very happy with that target. Yeah, I think we were aiming sort of 140. The pitch has sort of deteriorated a bit. So 140 sort of target, and we were struggling a little bit. But then some fantastic end. The end got us over the line, over that sort of target. So yeah, Moses in again. Just great food by Rob Sayer. Managed to stop the ball going down to Craig Park down here at Ferdman. And eyes on the uh, the Hertfordshire Norfolk game. Yeah. So I think Norfolk got 134. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a chance, I think, because I think the pitch is doing a bit over there. So obviously with all the rain that we've had. So Hertfordshire have got seven at the moment in reply. So yeah. they'll be that's so after uh, just after the one over though. It's going to so, be tight. Uh, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, sus I suspect so. Oh no, nervous times. Mm. So last season, James speaks a lot about the heartache. Was it in your hands and, and you lost to Bedfordshire or was it the Bedfordshire game looking back that cost you? Nah, so it was in our hands. We needed to um we needed to beat Bedfordshire twice and they hadn't won all they hadn't well, they won one game all season or whatever it was and we won the first game quite convincingly. Um Ooh, think, again bottom edge could go down for four, it is gonna go four. Four runs on the ball for Bedfordshire. Yeah, going back to that, I think um, yeah, it was in our hands. I think we were a bit complacent in the second game because we beat them really easily in the first game. We thought we thought we'd done it, and um, yeah, it was a bit high actually because you put a lot of work into it. And there's a lot of T20 cricket we play, and then to end up end up having as, well nothing in the end is, is quite harsh. But. And did that come into James's dressing room sort of talk before and in the huddle today? Did he mention that at all? Yeah, a bit of inspiration early doors. Um, just saying we don't do it again. <laughs> this is exactly the same situation again. Yeah. Deja vu. That was last game of the of the comp. So yeah. Don't try and repeat it. Yeah, hopefully you can get a winner. Bounce this time from Tim Hold Moses. To How tall is he, Sam? Uh, Tim is six foot eight and a half, I think. There you go. We'll take. So we thought it was six foot nine. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, like my, it's like my Swedish mate who had his uh, passport adjusted uh, when he went in to have his passport renewed. He was uh, six foot nine. Uh, but the, uh, the Swedish officials told him that he could only be six foot eight on his next password because clearly he was shrinking over age. Yeah, I think his Tinder profile says six foot eight, so we'll go with that. <laughs> a very, uh, should you say, Mary Mark Smith at Sawston last time round said he was six foot two, but he might have had a few beverages at that point. Not sure about smudges. smudges. 
perspective on life there. <laughs> Tim Rose in again, just hit to Rob Sayer at point. And Hertfordshire have gone big in the second over, unfortunately 27 without loss. I, I, think, I think you should stop telling me those scores. <laughs> okay. Let's win this game first. <laughs> Well, we'll tell you to look away now, like they, like they do on a Saturday night mm. before match of the day. We'll whisper it to the listeners. <laughs> yeah, cheers. And you can't hear. Tim Moses coming in again then. Bold, good length ball and straight through to Josh Browns behind the stumps. What did you make of your own performance in the in the first match then? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, the reason I'm sorry is because you all know 2020 is not really my game. So trying to make the best of a bad situation, obviously trying to practice my skills and stuff. And... Obviously, the pitch is turning, so trying to bowl a lot of cutters, a lot of slower balls, trying to mix up your skills a bit. So, But I always think as a bowler, 2020 is a bit of a lottery. I mean, some days you can bowl really well and still end up going for a lot of runs, and other days you can rock up bowl terribly and, uh, <laughs> and pick up three or four wickets. So it's... Um, oh, not another one outside edge. And going to Josh Smith, can he... Really well fielded down there. Kept it to a single. It's a genuine edge past Josh Bowers. A 15 without loss in the second over for Bedfordshire, chasing... At Cambridge's 158 uh, through their 20 overs. Of course, as we uh, know, it's the uh, Norfolk score in the, against Hertfordshire uh, that we also need to keep an eye on as well. And uh, as things stand at the moment, 27 without loss after two overs in reply to Norfolk's 134 for six. Obviously, the the uh, the need for the pitch as well to bring in another spinner. Do you think that's probably why? Because obviously Josh is useful in terms of bowling off spin as well. Yeah, I mean that's exactly it. It was providing the other option. Um, having another spin option is always good. You've always got Waxy who can bowl a few seamers and Parky. He's in front of us. He can bowl a few seamers as well. So um, yeah, disappointing to myself obviously, but it's um, it's a team game and I've played every game and we, we, as a team we're doing all right. So that's what we want really for the boys. He's just a single edge to the score there. Rob Sayer into the attack for Cambridge. Yeah, wicket you picked up was George Darlow, caught by Eddie Ballard. And I guess, was it probably one of those cutter slow balls that then the batsman mistimed and went and spooned into the air Yeah, to yeah. Eddie? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that in this game. He's definitely taking pace off the ball, trying to make the batsman work work for the pace. So we're in just a full ball down towards Craig Park in front of us here at Long Arm. Just a single. I think this is key if we can get a couple of wickets early here, especially with Rob bowling his overs early doors. Um, it could be the game. So in comes Sarah again, into the pitch. Oh, and a bit of lift. Seems to be, pitch seems to sort of at times keep low and at times lift up as well. Yeah, I think that's just the nature of the surface is really dry. Like, considering the rain we've had this week, it's unbelievably dry. And um, I suppose that's um, that's the nature of a dry wicket is it does does go up and down. A um, bit too paced, which often makes it quite hard to hit the ball. So um, spinners are definitely more effective. Just seems to come on nice still with dry pitch. Still come on, seems to come on quite nicely when there's pace on it, so... It's going to be a lot of spin this innings. Mm. Certainly saw after that first power play for Bedfordshire when Cambridgeshire were batting in the first match and Bedfordshire bowled the seam in the first few overs and then they switched to spin. You definitely saw a change in, obviously outside the power play it helps as well, but you definitely saw a change in, in momentum. I think that's why you really enjoy um, batting first, especially in T20 because you get to judge what the pitch is mm. doing. I think... Um, Getting first dibs on it with the bat, it's a lot easier to adjust in terms of batting than it is bowling. You've got to, you've got to really work out what's going on. So 15 for two now after uh, completing those first two overs. You're keeping an eye on that Norfolk Hertfordshire uh, score. 30 for one after uh, in, into the third over there. So that's uh, kind of looking up for uh, us Norfolk you know, fans here you know today. Who's out? Who's out? Uh, we can uh, probably check that in a moment or two for you. <laughs> that's that, that's I guess the key the... there. <laughs> Who do you want to be out? If Sikander's playing, we want Sikander to be out. Don't think he's playing. Ellison? Oh, sorry, Ellison's LBW. Oh, Ellison's a good player. No, I don't mind that. Bold Andy Hanby. Tim Moses in. Almost full. Bold to there. me. And it's got an edge and it's gone. Off the glove. Was it Sam or just a nick off the bat? Uh, yeah, I think it's just a bit of glove there. Yeah, quick bouncer from Tim. Obviously being so tall, he gets a lot of bounce. Um, mm. It's come to <laughs> quite difficult to play, so... Yeah, we'll bowl that. Very, very good delivery. So 15 for one then now for Bedfordshire after uh, two, well, two overs completed. Um, to returning to this, uh, the, the norfolk Hertfordshire game, it, it, the absolute nightmare, I suppose, would be for Norfolk, uh, or rather for you guys to win the game here and for, for Hertfordshire to excel over Norfolk. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, um, 
sort of do what we can do and then just let everything else take its course. Mm. I mean, you can look back. There's nothing you, you, nothing, nothing you can do. It's no, not like it's send out an extra fielder for Norfolk or anything, can <laughs> yeah, you? 13 men in the Norfolk field. Yeah, precisely. I mean, retrospectively, we could have... Delia's 12th man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we could have done something, like, I mean, obviously earlier in the season, we could have had it in our, in our hands rather than being in other people's hands. But um, you can only do what you can do on the day. And today, yeah. our target is to win both games, so... Oh, half, that task, half of that task has uh, been completed and one wicket down in the second half of that task and the second of these two uh, T20 games. We're bringing you uh, this one on this telecast from Cambridge 105 Radio. We'll be able to uh, relive it if you want to see it all over again <laughs> once, it's, uh, once it's done. I suspect particularly from a Cambridge point of view, if Cambridge you win, you'll uh, be uh, reliving every moment. Because mm. Mo's getting all full Yorker there, couldn't have... Really squid the batsman for room there. Did you uh, manage to catch much catch much of the last broadcast, Sam? Look back over the sort of the game at, against uh, Norfolk at Sawston. Yeah, you do have a little bit of a badger. It's amazing. We never see never see ourselves at this level. We never really see ourselves bowling and batting and things like that. So to go back and watch it, it's a bit weird. It's a bit. Um a bit surreal. <laughs> you won't remember this, you'll be far too young, but it kind of feels like uh, BBC Sunday League coverage in the 1980s. <laughs> yeah, when they were allowed to bowl with shortened run-ups and get it in before the, before the six o'clock news. Yeah, something, something like that. And if, um, and if the game ended early, they'd go over to Cardiff for BBC Wales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, no, it's good. It's always good to look back on your performance as well. Obviously, do a lot of video coaching in the winter and stuff and drilling. So try and get it into practice in a match. Completely different being outside. Yeah, and Cosmos again, that short ball again, up in the air, Callum Guest underneath it, he won't drop it. Bucket hands himself, and he runs in, <laughs> celebrating another wicket. Tim Moses has got two now. Certainly some celebrations uh, going on here. The Cambridgeshire team know exactly what's happening. But, uh, they are uh, possibly in command here over Bedfordshire at uh, Bedford Cricket Club. Uh, all they can do is hope that uh, Norfolk do the business as well and that they're able to uh, come come back and uh, uh, overcome uh, Hertfordshire, who currently haven't gotten that further update, 30 for 1 uh, there. Here, though, that's 17 uh, for 2, only into uh, the third area. So a pretty good start, it would seem, uh, from, from Cambridgeshire. How, how have the tactics changed, would you say, uh, between this game and the, the first one from earlier today in, ter in terms of uh, who's, who's been sent out to bowl against Bedfordshire? Uh, I think just the biggest thing is you learn from the pitch. Obviously, you play the, same, uh, play the second game on the same wicket. So um, it's a massive sort of the first game is a massive learning curve in terms of what to do. So as you can see, we've picked an extra spinner. Uh, Bedfordshire bowl very little seam because uh, we know that spin sort of conducive to spin the wicket. Um, and the same for us. I mean, obviously, Timmy's doing a job here, hitting the deck hard. But I think after Tim's bowl, you won't see any more, won't see any more seamers because... You learn so they spin all the way through yeah, to the end of the match. It's, it's a bit weird playing two games in a day because you get a sort of a, a glance of what the pitch has already done, so you're able to adjust to it. And I think that's the biggest learning curve is, 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 is the wicket in terms of the two games. And obviously the first match today won today, something you haven't done all season, winning at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we always seem to wake up about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> so. Posing again, just a nudge into the offside. And do you have an eye on the the way that the pitch might change during the course of, uh, during the course of the match, or is simply the fact that it's only twenty overs a side means that the pitch isn't really going to change significantly anyway? No, well, so normally if you play one T20, the pitch won't change too much. But over a course of a day, so they've got two T20s and eighty overs, and you would expect a club wicket to change over eighty overs. So obviously this game we really wanted to bat first because you knew the longer longer the game's been on, the harder it should become to bat. So Tim's bowling fantastically. Yeah, yeah, really. Was into in, followed him into the leg side there. Josh Brown's taking a nice catch to, to his left. Yeah, you certainly learn over the day, and the pitch will change. I mean, one T twenty, not really much change, but you have a couple, yeah. especially with how dry it is. I suppose the difference between the first innings of the fourth innings, then there's there's clearly uh, yeah. going, going to be a difference between the two. Yeah, the more cricket you get on the pitch, often it deteriorates. Um, certainly, if it's as dry as this, so. In comes Moses once again, then he's galloping run up, full of all that time, clipped into the leg side, lovely shot off his legs, and it's going to race away for four. Let's move this going to 21 for two. And uh, Tim smacks the ground in disappointment, last ball of the over, by the looks of it. Craig, you park, he looks a bit tired in front of me. Lots of running today, Craig. Running hard, very good batting from him today earlier on. Yeah. 
Running on a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> Crucial knock though, wasn't it? Four, yeah, forty odd at the end. Fantastic hitting. We know we know what he's capable of, and he's he'll admit himself he's struggled a bit over the course of the last few weekends. But um, that was brilliant hitting. Nearly killed some spectators when the tires <laughs> fell off the roof. <laughs> Everyone ducking for cover. To be Yogi, didn't it? Yeah, poor old Yogi. Yeah, never seen him move so fast. <laughs> Keith Coburn there hasn't actually moved since though. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> it. He's relaxed. And you are you are talking to the the number one person about wickets, Julian. Just a groundskeeper yourself, aren't you? Uh, well, I don't really do cricket, but golf. Golf's my thing. Yeah, greenkeeping. Really enjoy being out on the golf course today. So, which golf courses? Uh, St Ives Golf Course, where I work. So okay. In the summer, that's... It's a ten-minute drive from me. Yeah, that's it. So, I drift between being on a cricket field and being on the golf course. So, it's, summers aren't too bad. <laughs> as long as the weather's right, I suppose. Income guess then. Bowling is right arm. Ospin. So during the winter months, is it brave the rain and get out there still, or what do you get? Yeah, out there? yeah. So you, you, I've been, I've just finished university, so oh, of course done that. So when I'm not at uni I'm, or training, I'll be on the golf course and freezing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. wearing sort of four coats and three <laughs> pairs of trousers. But so the fact we've had quite a bit of rain this this past week or so, that's that good for a golf course? Ah, uh, yeah, because it's warm as well. That's a massive. That's a massive. It's oh my goodness, shot. Mandy Reynolds almost hit into the covers. That's a six. six. Callum gives him a bit of a stare, has a smile afterwards, and uh, give that to his mark and think about his next delivery. Umpire Medlin putting his uh, hands up in the air and down again. Uh, so that same rain, from the point of view of a cricket pitch slash field, what's the uh, yeah, so what's the prognosis there? Slightly different. Yeah, I would no, have the thought. grass just goes quicker. Um, it makes it easier to produce a wicket if you've got water, because I mean you've got the option of making it dry if you put the covers on and stuff. So. It's good to have water, and obviously from, from grass, I mean, you just want it to grow, don't you, if it's healthy. Obviously last year with the massive drought, people were struggling to get to get any sort of decent wickets and outfields because it was just so dry, but it's nice to see, see some green grass this year, certainly. <laughs> yeah, just uh, drive into the offside there, no run, guest in again. Right arm and hit down the ground again. Craig Park's going to be in business fielding here, plugs in the outfield and back into Callum. Quite a dangerous player, Andy Reynoldson. I feel like he's the big wicket here if we can get him. Surprised he didn't open the bat in, yeah, in the he's first a, match. He's um, strange because he's a very, very good red ball player. He, he eats a lot, he, he faces a lot of balls and bat a lot of time. Um, so you feel like he should open up in T20 because he wanted to bat the 20 overs. So, yeah. on, the, on the full to the leg side, Harrison Craig, the man out sweeping. Julian was asking earlier how tall is Harrison Craig then compared to Tim? I reckon he's got, a f oh, I don't know. Was Harrison five foot six? A little lad, completely the other end of the scale. Yeah. <laughs> so there's Ooh. at least one player on the uh, on the field who I'm I'm taller than. Yeah, you got obviously the captain James Williams. He's not much taller himself. So little lad. I'm still looking for someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tim Moses has got the ball back in his hand. So how tall are you then, Ollie? I reckon about five six ish. Okay. I don't really measure much don't want to disappoint myself <laughs> <laughs> you don't still have a chart up in your bedroom I don't sort of a too cart too cartoon character to uh, to measure yourself against no every time I got my grandma's there he has like in like the garage he has this cupboard which we measure on like a sharpie You've got the lines on the wall yeah exactly yeah. yeah 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 I think my sister's last one was about 2003 but I managed to do it every time comes Tim Moses again oh lifted off a good length again so Berlin Lexing yesterday. Um, yes. Obviously, another disappointing loss. I don't hate, hate to bring it up, but obviously, while you're here, might as well talk about it. <laughs> Bitter. Um, I, I guess it's just that we speak to Joe, obviously, regularly, technically, the, the captain. It's just a case of putting, I guess, two aspects of the, the performance together. You've batted well at times and then bowled well at times. It's just a case of putting it together. Yeah, I mean, we're, what, nine weeks into the season now? and well, eight, nine weeks into the season now. I don't think we've had a single game where we've um, put both things together. I mean, there's been times where we've batted brilliantly, and there's been times where we've bowled fantastically. And Sudbury was one where we bowled, bowled brilliantly. But it would be nice to put the whole performance together. And if we can do that, I reckon we could probably, um, wouldn't say beat everyone in the league, but we'd certainly sort of be up there and we'd, have a, we'd be definitely competitive in every game we play. I mean, yes, they were disappointing because um, they probably got 22 many, but we did bowl pretty well and we fielded fantastically. And um, we got off to a decent start with the bat. It was just disappointing how people sort of got themselves out in silly ways and they obviously had a very good spinner in Ankit Sharma who, who ran through us a little bit but yeah it's just disappointing to for another another, another loss in a game we should have got some points from really that's mm. the biggest thing Tim Rose is balling there just 
turning away from it. Is, is the, it feels like the pitch is sticking a bit. We saw it at Sawston, now batsmen were getting through their shot quite a bit early. Seems to be a similar sort of situation here with the short ball. Yeah, it's just if it is sort of a dry wicket, if it just, um, if it just if it is just dry, it just holds in the pitch a little bit, especially if you bang it in, as, as Tim obviously being so tall can hit the deck quite hard, and if you hit, a, hit the can just stop in the wicket a bit. You see a struggle to time it. Yeah, and he comes again now, Moses, galloping in, right arm, just must have hit his pad and flicked into the leg, so they'll come through for one leg bite. Yeah, so what's really the, the aim for Burn Lexing now, obviously, as the immediate the immediate future get, is obviously get a win. <laughs> <laughs> is to try and almost move yourself clear from the bottom of Vauxhall Mallows down there. But uh, in terms of long term ambitions of the season, I guess to try and secure yourself and put, got a bit of bragging rights to finish the highest out of the Cambridgeshire sides. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to finish the highest out of the Cambridgeshire sides. But um, I think for us, it's just string a few games together. I think in cricket is massive in terms of if you get on a losing streak, you sort of forget how to win. I feel like that. If we can get a win under our belt, um, we went through two, three, four games on the bounce, all of a sudden we'll be easily be mid table. So it's pretty tight. So Moses in again, another short ball and oh, just the batsman turning away and Josh Seriously Bowers quick that. parries. What is the, the the sort of quickest you usually face at minor counties? What are the top speeds that the the players can get up to? Uh there's a, there's a couple of lads, so uh, the lad for plays with Lynx who gets it through quite quickly, controversially, and gets it through quite quickly. <laughs> um but he'll bowl like Went on his day or bowl mid eighties, um, but most 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 decent seamers settle around to sort of the high seventies, eighty mile an hour. And then obviously you've got the dibbly dobblies who are <laughs> pretty medium paces who tend to do a lot of the um, a lot of the hard yards and they'll bowl they'll bowl like mid seventies and they sort of swing in and have good skills. So mm. I don't necessarily th the pace isn't much slower, um, but it's definitely the skills at this level are the ones that tend to be the more successful bowlers. So after six overs, Bedfordshire thirty four two. Meanwhile. Uh, Norfolk at the moment are 43 for two. Uh, we mentioned, I think, Ellison, uh, who was out previously. It's Patel, uh, who is uh, the latest man out. Gale uh, is still in on 18, including two sixes in that total. So uh, Nor um, Norfolk may be clawing a little bit back against Hertfordshire, although they've uh, set the total of 134 uh, for six off of their uh, 20 overs. A little bit different here with um, Cambridgeshire uh, setting a target of 159. They scored 158. Bedfordshire uh, have to get 159 to win. But of course, uh, two wickets down and uh, 30 runs uh, scored for them after, after their six overs. And quickly mentioning uh, the India-Pakistan game. Pakistan... 58 for one at the moment after uh, and they, they, they basically need another 279 runs uh, to win from their remaining 36 overs that's at Old Trafford so I guess nervy times um. yeah and obviously I had the Rishi's out at Hertfordshire obviously good mates with Rishi so I don't like seeing him, seeing him get out but um that's you do play, today because he's a seriously <laughs> dangerous player. Yeah. So plays is played a few times for Essex this season. Fantastic young cricketer. Yeah, he's contracted at Essex. He's an Essex player, but um, obviously he's playing uh, club cricket at Potters Bar in Hertfordshire. So any cricket he can get, he gets on the cricket field, and um, he's part of the Cambridge MCC setup mm. as well with me. So, um, yeah, obviously we want to see him score runs, but not when he's playing for Hertfordshire. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of movement with the sight screen once again. Chaos, mate. That's the sight screen action. I presume there's a break. Is there a break they um, they put on take off? Maybe they don't need it. This thing's so flipping no, heavy. They're just very, very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and us cricketers, we're not designed for the gym, so we um, we struggle with heavy sight screens. I'm sure your Instagram's got a few gym posts, Sam? Yeah, when I was about 18, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Need to update, maybe. <laughs> Harrison Craig coming into bowl now. Left arm. Orthodox spin, that's a big hit. That's a full toss. That's going away for six. It might hit the nets. It's evaded them and into the trees. 37 for two into the seventh over. He's a very dangerous player. Got to watch out. Got his own style. Very low hands. Picks the bat up. Gives it a mighty whack. MCC using season finished, is it now? Yeah, we finished this week, so we um we had a bit of a frustrating week at Colchester. We played at Colchester this week against Durham, and we played the one day, and unfortunately lost, and then we didn't play it, didn't play any any sessions in the three day. So um, yeah, frustrating end to my MCC career, really. <laughs> but um, 
no, nah, it's been good. It's a great experience, and obviously playing against the counties. And of course, yeah, because obviously move on from university and no longer play for the MCCU side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been good. Um, so just cut away from Reynoldson. As a Colchester lad, I'm very disappointed that you weren't able to uh, to, to, to to play there, or at least get out on the field. Yeah, we played we played the, the one day, and it was it was a it was good actually. I've never been to Colchester before. I've not really played much cricket in Essex, and. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to expect, and it was a lovely wicket, and it was, it was a good ground. Um, so it was, I was a bit frustrated that we didn't get out in the three-day, because I certainly enjoyed it. But um, Reynoldson just bottom edging onto... almost sounded like a bail being removed, but it wasn't. Not quite. Of course, you might be playing. You played after this ball. Come back to that. Harrison Cragen again. Oh, big swing. And a miss. I guess say, you, you played, obviously, against Worcestershire for MCCU and Knotts. Yeah, so earlier on we the got, season we got. What did we get? Uh, did we get three games in this year? Yeah, Essex, Worcestershire, and Nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah so we, Hooky as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. It's um, a great experience it? for us, as students and sort of amateur cricketers, sort of um, just to get out there and see where you're at. I think we always, you always wonder what could have been or whatever. And <laughs> some, some of the younger lads obviously have aspirations of, of playing a higher standard. So it's always a good, good sort of level of knowing when you're at. And to play against people like Alistair Cook, I mean, as a student, there's nothing better really. So how did you bowl against him? Yeah, he really enjoys playing the cut shot. He likes playing the cut shot, and I fed it to him, to be fair. But <laughs> a few nerves jangling around early doors. But, no, nah, it's a great experience. And, yeah, bowled all right. And we didn't, we didn't embarrass ourselves, which is the key for us, I think, is to make sure we put up a decent, get a decent fight. And Good to hear. Another wicket for Norfolk. Uh, I should be precise. Another wicket, uh, Hertfordshire down another. Hussain, the captain, uh, out for just two. So, 45 uh, for, for three at Harpenden uh, this afternoon. So, uh, promising news? Yeah, very promising. I don't know how many overs have gone. How many overs have gone? Are we? Uh, we've gone through seven overs Ooh, at uh, yeah, the Hertfordshire promising. game. That is promising news. <laughs> Josh Smith returning to bowl for Cambridgeshire on the other end now. A couple more wickets. Come on, Norfolk. I don't think I've ever said that before. <laughs> you won't be saying it at Sawston, will you? But, uh... <laughs> Just this one day. I think everybody's allowed to have one day where they, they support another team other than their own, just just for um, well, just for the purposes of their own team doing well, really. And uh, Cambridgeshire not doing uh, t uh, at all badly here, with uh, Bedfordshire uh, on 42 uh, for two, chasing their target of 159. There's uh, no run on that one, just goes uh, straight to the keeper, but it looks to be a wide, so it's uh, maybe not exactly what was uh, being planned on that. Josh Smith in again then. My time off's been a full length ball. Pushed out into the offside towards Callum. Football skills there. Who's the best footballer then, Sam? Best footballer in this side? Ooh. I'm not going to say myself because I am absolutely useless. <laughs> i tell you who's underrated is keeper Josh Bowers. He goes in goal. Yeah. He's like a cat. <laughs> he's a very, very good goalkeeper. So he's not a bad footballer at all. Um, Josh Smith in, bowls. Good length ball, just slightly shorter than the last one. Cut on the back foot to Tim Moses. Smith changing his angle. Just a bit of bounce there. Shows that variation of the on the pitch. He does put a lot of revs on it, Josh, and he gets for his action really nicely and puts a lot of spin on it. So he's one of the bars you do expect to get a lot of bounce. Very effective on a wicket like this. Just cut on the back foot to the Jamie Seabrook on the <laughs> offside boundary. He was getting confused between you and him earlier because of your floppy hats. Notice your beard, though, was what gave it away. Yeah, I'm not sure whether to get rid of it. Yeah, I'm just being a bit lazy, really. 51 for three, eight overs gone for Havershire. And uh, but runs are being scored here. Is it a six? It is. Six for Bedfordshire. Move on to 51 for two. Fortunately, once again, the last ball of the over going for a boundary. With the beard, you put me in the mind of Jim Troughton. He used to play for Warwickshire. Jim Troughton? Yeah. That's a compliment. He's a very good cricketer. <laughs> <laughs> father, of course. As, uh, his, father was on, uh, his grandfather was Patrick Troughton, who was in, uh, in Doctor Who. His father, David Troughton, who I think is in the, in the Archers uh, these days. Well, anyway, I'm trying to remember what Jim's doing. He's, he's no, no longer playing, of course. No, he's now... Um, last, time I, last time I 
saw him. He was at, well, he was at Warwickshire. He's, I think he's head coach of Warwickshire. Okay. Yeah, he's so he's pursuing you know, through, the, uh, through, the, through the ranks there. As yeah, it's great from playing into coaching. As Warwickshire often do, I've noticed, over, over, over the years. As often there's, a, there's an ex-player who's, uh, who's in charge of the team. Yeah, I think it's a tran- transition for, for older players. I mean, it's always nice to have, a, have an old head. On the on the on the um, on the playing field, but if they can't be on the field, then so it's good to have players with that experience, sort of in the coaching staff. So, I, th- I think uh, another over has passed, and Hertfordshire fifty-five for three. So runs not coming plenty at all for Hertfordshire there, almost at the halfway point of that innings. Yeah, Norfolk slowing them down. Of course, um, let's let this uh, ball go through. It's hit towards the leg side. Tim Moses out there. Can he reach it? Even oh my he goodness, can't. that was a six, wasn't it? Way over towards the uh, the side with the with with the nets. That's, um, I think that's what a game has fallen between uh, the, the covers and the nets and the fielder uh, uh, fishing that one out. So, um, Hit towards Cow it, Corner again. If it yeah. evades Tim Moses, then if I, if I, I, think, Moses. I think it's going to evade any human being on the planet. Really. If, it, if it's too tall for Tim, then it's, uh, you're kind of, kind, of, kind of done for, uh, really, on that. Yeah, the interest, obviously, is uh, assuming uh, that Norfolk are able to overhaul Hertfordshire. And again, it's another big hit, and it's gone. Same result, six once more. This one rolling a little bit further, heading over towards uh, the trees. That's a 12 just over the last two balls, which is uh, not particularly helpful. It should take us to uh, 63 for two uh, in the ninth uh, over now. Eight overs uh, already completed. Yeah, Harrison Craig had 11 off his first over. He had 12 off his second. Well, he won't be bowling again. I guess suspect if the, uh, if, the if the captain is able to uh, organise things in the way. Um, that that he wants to do be interesting because a lot of the sort of spin bowling in the in the last innings in the last match was sort of darted in a bit quicker sort of a bit short back of a length as you saw the likes of Craig and, and Callum doing well with the fuller length stuff towards the back end of the last innings yeah I think um, Harrison definitely gives a bit of flight and puts lots of revs on it um, don't mind it's an attacking way of bowling um, in one day cricket sometimes it's good to dart it in um, but certainly enjoy people who like sort of but we could take in lines and lengths like Harrison does. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it does, does get hit for six, but obviously they're hitting it in the air. There was always a chance for a catch or whatever, so um, don't mind him taking a bit of a risk there. So Hertfordshire's net run rate. That's their way for this. So he's going to sort of false start uh, for the uh, bowler there. So a dead ball signals the umpire. He's going to have another little go on this. Slight false start again. In comes Harrison Craig. Nice Yorker length. This one couldn't quite dig it out. So, yeah, so Hertfordshire's net run rate, minus 0.02, whereas Cambridgeshire's is 0.76. Seen Craig in. Ooh, better length that time. Turned away and just sort of edged down to Josh Smith. So, in theory, all Cambridgeshire need to do is win. And uh, Norfolk have to stop half. I tell you what, it's more. I'd rather be on the field. It's more nervous sitting here listening to you tell me the half should <laughs> score. I'd rather be out there and not know what's going on and concentrating on the game. Yeah. <laughs> and I presumably, if you weren't out, if you were out there, you would have. Is, is, are there any plans for a signal if the game Norfolk game were to finish sooner? No, or? No, no, no. I think it's, you just concentrate on what we can do, and then obviously, if we get the win and Norfolk get the win, then um, have a few beers afterwards and celebrate. <laughs> Look forward to a finals day, but and well deserved they'll be too. Good comeback from Harrison Craig there, bold. Well bold. Three or four Yorkers darted in at the batsman's feet. Interesting to see who comes back on at the other end. See who's got overs left. Josh Smith bowled two overs according to this scorecard so far. Tim Moses three. Rob Sayer, Callum Guest, Harrison Craig. Well, Rob Sayer and Callum Guest all have one each. Harrison Craig just bowled his second. So Josh Smith is continuing. Josh was saying he plays in for Peter in the North Hans Prem. A shot through cover region. Jamie Seabrook sweeping on that offside boundary. And which did Josh play county cricket or minor county cricket last year? No, so this is Josh, Josh made his debut in the last in the one day two weeks ago. Um against Norfolk. He's part of the Leeds Bradford MCCU setup, so he's at university in Leeds. Um and he was a, he's an old Kim Bolton lad, so and scored at Kim Bolton. I'm not sure. Played a lot for Huntingdonshire as a child, but I'm not sure if he's been any, been through any county setups apart from Huntingdonshire. Good to have him around. Very talented cricketer. 
Yeah, I'm sure he, he opened the bat and didn't he in that 50 over game against Norfolk. Yeah, I, I think he's going to have a lot of opening the batting to do for us for the rest of the year. Um, <laughs> certainly in the, in the three-day stuff. We be a key part of the, part of the team. I'll talk to you about that three-day competition championship in just a bit. Finish this over from Josh Smith as he gets through him quite quickly. Callum Guest going up inside the ring on the offside. Just a back of a left ball and it will be Callum chasing this down towards us here in a third man-like position. just partnership building just seems to chemistry just be seems to be going a little bit quieter yeah wickets wickets cricket's all about wickets obviously you say about containing containing runs and trying to not leak too many boundaries but wickets do an amazing role of, of stopping the run rate and obviously partnerships partnerships with batting win your games of cricket often you get two big partnerships and, and that and that gives you gets you a good score so they're already past the 50 partnership, these two, and the last over. Josh Smith in again, and that's... Catch it. Waxy. Oh, chipped in the air, and Waxy's oh, saying he's coming that. underneath, and it's dropped short, plucked in the field. Just a bit of luck that's not going Cambridge's way at the minute. Yeah, so the three-day championship. Obviously, next year going to be reduced down to four uh, games, I believe. So I imagine the divisions will split again, so it's all about getting into the... I think it's the top half of the table, which guarantees you in like the, the Premier... I guess Eastern region, is it? Yeah, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but I, I, I think they're splitting it down again. Yes, you're playing less games, um, but you're playing against more of the level you're at because some games are a bit of a... Because some of the top minor counties, I mean, we've done really well in the three-day stuff, but some of the top minor counties like Lincolnshire play against some teams and it's a bit of a bit of a non-competition. So, mm. And if you make a, certainly make a promotion relegation situation, then there's a bit more on it. So, You didn't see how you're going. And, and players are easily able to transfer skills from one to another. Yeah, I mean, for someone like me, I can't wait to play three-day cricket. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't mind playing T20. I, I, I love playing cricket. But um, certainly for a lot of these boys, they... Rob says, short ball, hit away onto the leg side. It's, I think it's, again, plugged in the field. Wax is saying the man chasing it, stops it with his foot. Considering he's the worst footballer in the side, that's <laughs> a fantastic bit of fielding. <laughs> yeah, he always seems to have a smile on his face, but never really seems to enjoy his fielding. No, he's, he's not a fielder. But he, um, <laughs> he's always there for the banter and he... Um, <laughs> and he's got a good pair of hands anyway, so. Now, don't look at the Hertfordshire North for score for now. Okay. Rob said ball now, and it's another big hit. It's another six straight over the sight screen down the ground. Temperature are going to have to do something, aren't they, to arrest this scoring because it's, uh, it's going a bit too free flowing at the moment. Yeah, well, getting the man out, she's got a 50 would help. And he. Reynoldson just passed that 50 up to 52 with that six. It's been a very impressive knock from him so far. There's long levers. And uh, James Williams is just taking to his field where he wants him to go. So a floated ball this time. Pushed into the offside. Wax is saying doing the fielding. What would you like the score to be? A half of your score. What would what, you represent a good score at 11 overs gone? Maybe one more wicket. Uh, 55 for four. Do you want to know? <laughs> Honestly, this is so... You know, I'd rather be out there, I'll tell you. We'll keep it quiet for the minute then. <laughs> Rob Sayer. Coming in, turning around, he's Mark and bowling once again. Oh, what spin? Oh, just... Swerted to James Williams in the inner ring on the offside. Siren again. Oh, it's a shot. It's gone high in the air. Park underneath it, and it's just evaded him. And it's gone for six. It was very, very tight. Slightly by one gust of wind, and that could have been coming in our direction. Pretty close. It's just not going. Just not going our way at the minute. Well, Cambridge's way at the minute. It's um, the tight, was it? 80 off 10. Yeah. Um, need some... Find some inspiration from somewhere. These two are going really well with the bat. Now 86 for two. Uh, the score uh, currently for Bedfordshire. Chasing Cambridge's 158. So 159 and two to win. A duty to our listeners. Hertfordshire for 11 over 73 for free. 
Chasing off 11. Off 11. Chasing 145 to win. I was reasonably confident in, uh, in Norfolk to start off with. I'm sorry to say I'm losing confidence mm. in them. It was all going to so have 55 for free and they just put a bit of a sprint on in the last couple of overs. But <laughs> it's very... It's very, very tight. It's very, very tight. Temperature never make things easy. <laughs> Try being a Somerset fan. <laughs> Same thing, yeah. <laughs> Great finishing second. Yeah, love it. Wax is saying looks like he's about to come on to bolt. He did very well, didn't he, in that 50 over Brilliant. match against Norfolk. Looked like Norfolk might get over the line, but apparently his Yorkers were spot on. Yeah, fantastic. Um, he's a bit of a reluctant bowler. Doesn't really enjoy his bowling. <laughs> um, but um, does it for the team and really, really needs someone to come in at that point. Everyone else was struggling a little bit on their day. Um, and Waxy came in and just bowled unbelievable, well, a great spell of Yorkers and bowled to a plan and it was fantastic. I should think he'll probably try and do the same thing here, yeah. Looks just like that, it. yeah. I was saying to Josh Smith earlier, all the, the new trends of cutters, balls into the pitch, hitting the track hard and slower balls, you can never beat a good Yorker, can you? No, I mean, the only thing about Yorkers in this day and age is, um, is if, you, if you miss it, it goes miles. Um, but if you can nail a Yorker, I mean, you look at like someone like Lassif Malinga who plays for Anchor, mm. still nails his Yorkers and he, he's fantastic. But, um, yeah, no, that's, that's the big issue is if you miss it, you go miles. Yeah, Andy Reynoldson and AJ on my at the crease. Rikers are saying in now, again, doing very well. Squirted out that one, the cover region. There's been news at Harpenden. Wicket for for Norfolk, 77 for four off 12 overs. So just the four runs scored in that over and the wicket taken as well. This, this is genuinely horrible. <laughs> I'm going to go. I might have to leave you. <laughs> another another grey hair or two has added. You, yeah. You've already what? got too many anyway at 25. I'm sure they'll all be restored where uh, Norfolk, uh, or when, more positively, uh, when <laughs> Norfolk are able to uh, beat Hertfordshire. We'll see what happens there. Really good bowling from the shot this time. Oh, James Williams running in there. Another really well-executed Yorker from Waxer Saint. James Williams missing the stumps, and it was Andy Reynoldson, the man they wanted. Well, wicket's clearly what we need here at the moment. 89 uh, for two and uh, Reynoldson and oh, Reynoldson won one here let me have a look at that over there and it's 58 needed off 48 at Harpenden like I was saying once again in the block out his captain's asked him to deliver some Yorkers and he certainly has done so far this is really good bowling this you always feel as well at this point whether it be this over or the next one, and the other, the next bowler picks up wicket. There's something's going to give. I say, if you, it's, it's just accumulation of dots, really. Dots and ones. You win your games of cricket in in white ball formats. Um, if you can build a couple of overs, all of a sudden the batsman will try something different, and more often than not, you'll get a wicket. They're saying in batsman uses his feet to try and, I guess, get to the pitch of the ball, but he almost made it a yorker himself. Josh Bowers sweeping up the ball. Had a nice little tweet from uh, Unicorns Cricket, the organisers of this uh, competition, mentioning our telecast uh, online this afternoon. Uh, also, if you want to get in touch yourselves, you can tweet us at Cambridge105, or you can also find us on Facebook, Cambridge105 there. And, of course, uh, you can email studio at cambridge105.co.uk. Because I'm saying it again, just slightly... Slightly fuller length this one, but only manage a single. You can also get in touch on from the pavilion at FTP Cricket underscore 105, Sam Ripperton's favourite radio show. A regular listener. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> no, it's very Live or to the app, Apple podcast? I normally go podcast before at work. I do listen to it um, when I'm on my mower at work. So it's a nice afternoon listen for an hour. Good. Yeah. Good to hear. And also, I'm still leading the. The competition and be the, uh, yeah. the biggest badge, which is another reason, out. another reason to, another reason uh, to, for me to, to be listen. interested. Yeah, yeah. obviously, so <laughs> the only reason, yeah. <laughs> we're getting around all the listeners one at a time to uh, to make sure they can have a go at getting on the leaderboard for that. 
Yeah, I had a phone call from Willow after he'd been on last week. Very disappointed in his performance. Can compared to the previous three, though, he did very well. Oh, really? We had three ducks in a row. Oh, that's disastrous. <laughs> Eighty-eight for four, off thirteen is the Hartford Chiscal. Eighty-eight for four. Robbie. Robbie. <laughs> Rob Sayers asking us down here. At, eighty-eight for four, on. off thirteen. Case of one forty-five. He's still checking his phone. I'm not sure if he believes us. That's the chairman. He is worried. So, I think Craig Park has come on to bowl. Is this the type of bowling you were saying a bit more skillful, your low 70s? and Yeah, so Puck, he's obviously he's primarily a batsman, but he offers offers an option with the ball. Um, and he'll bowl, he'll bowl sort of low 70s, but he's got great skills, really good slow balls. And then with a red ball as well, he swings it both ways. So he's, um, he's certainly an option. I mean, you go in with your main, main sort of bowlers and then to have someone like him who's a batsman who can bowl a bit is, is really good. So obviously spinners were struggling a bit there. It's nice to turn to the part-time seam, see if he can do the job. Well, he comes again now, just back of a length. That length that was so successful throughout the day today. Rob Sayers come and joined us, not in the, by the commentary table, but to field at long on. If the ball does evade him, Sam Rippington will be up to catch it to save our equipment. I will do. No ball into the pitch. Slapped on the bottom edge of the bat down to Rob Sayers. Tallest men on the boundary. Jamie Seabrook out on the leg side, sweeping. Rob Sayer and Tim Moses long off and long on, respectively. Ooh, he's hit his pads. An appeal, an appeal from Sam Ripton to my left. Not out. Not Apparently. Out. I thought it was quite close. And Harrison Craig sweeping on the offside as well. That's a muted appeal all round, actually, but even from you, Sam. <laughs> yeah, we just need a wiki, I think. I think that'd be key, yeah. I think these two these two go to the end, I think we, we might struggle. But, um, so Hertfordshire will update you with the score in a minute. Craig Park coming in now, right arms. Oh, I, I, I think that was a what a chance for a catch. It's a great effort from Craig Park. You've seen that on the it? cameras. It's still <laughs> sprawled is, on, the, on the ground again, feet to the edge, gradually sort of pushing himself up, sort of pat on the back. Uh, Park I mean, is the kind of guy who would take a catch like that, to be fair. I mean, and, uh, one from the batsman as well, but uh, the, the net result <laughs> is that the score was still 93 uh, for two, and we've got two batsmen out there, and we're both uh, scoring at great guns. Well, I mean, he did well to stop the boundary, let alone attempt to go for a catch. Hertfordshire in 94 for four or 14. Six overs to go. They require 41 to win. Oh, they just Norfolk, come on. <laughs> Need another couple of wickets there as well. Craig Park in. Wickets needed everywhere. Catch you might have one now. Hooked to the leg side. Jamie Seabrook takes the catch. Craig Park has got the danger man. It's Andy Reynoldson is out. That could be the wicket which is needed for Cambridgeshire. As uh, Bedfordshire, Bedfordshire go for uh, 93 for three. Now, of course, there are other batsmen to come in which could present... Uh, Equal uh, problems. Now, the, the list that we have for players coming and who actually does come in, of course, two entirely <laughs> uh, different things. Is this George, we ask ourselves? George Thurston's, yeah, coming in. Opened the batting in the first game. So. Just playing slightly down uh, the order this time around. But we'll uh, see uh, how he does. Let's see his uh, check his score last time around. Of course, when he was opening the batting, uh, he only got the six. And that was the, the one, four, and two, and two singles for his trouble there so we'll see how he performs a little further uh, down down the order this time pretty impressive knock from Andy and also in there Sam Rippington was saying he's the danger man big wicket from Craig Park was it a look to be like a slur ball into the deck yeah I think that's exactly what we've sort of knew the wicket was going to do I think if you if you bowl if you can nail your Yorker nail your Yorker but if if you can't do that then definitely into the wicket try and bowl those slur balls and certainly if you bowl the slow ball, the batsman's got to put the pace on it. So they've got to try and hit it harder. And it does become challenging on a wicket like this. And Puck has executed his plans perfectly there. He joined us down here at Ferbman. Looks a bit tired. Keep going, Craig. Or bold. 
He had a one of them. Busy day yesterday. They're playing with Foxton as well, I'd imagine. Yeah, he would have played at Foxton yesterday. He loves his cricket. Works, Works at Lords. What a place to work. Wackler saying, in all Callum Guest goes the diving catch. If you wanted one man to try and attempt it, probably would be Callum. Tried a one handed catch there, didn't he? Just sort of diving and uh, stretching his hand out in the hope that it would make uh, contact with the ball, but unfortunately disappointed uh, with uh, that particular attempt. Just the four runs off the over for Hertfordshire. They're 98 for four with five overs to go. <laughs> they require. 37 to win off 30. In comes Waxerson again to try and nail those Yorkers, and he's really done a great job of doing so. They're restricted to singles at the minute. Well, Cambridgeshire doing everything they can to keep their side uh, of the bargain. Of course, uh, Norfolk have to keep their side too if Cambridgeshire are to make finals day. They're at uh, the top of uh, the Unicorns table. Uh, we have Hertfordshire on 10 points and Cambridgeshire on 8. But uh, were they to finish level on 10, uh, Cambridgeshire, chances are they would have a higher net run rate and that would push them through uh, to finals day. Wackers are saying in then bowls right arm. Oh, it's a good length ball. It's a good. Swing and a miss from the batsman straight for to Josh Bowers and a good delivery. The batsmen set at Hertfordshire are Southgate and Fraser. Know much about them, Sam? Uh, both very good cricketers, actually. <laughs> I don't like the don't like the fact you told me that. Yeah, um, Fraser gives the ball a mighty whack, and um, Jamie Southgate, yeah, he's a solid cricketer. Bats and bowls, and he's a gun fielder. So that's made me a bit nervous. Actually, I thought they might have been gone by now, but <laughs> if you weren't nervous already, Wackers are saying, "Oh, full length ball," and that's when misses out there. The umpires peering round, Wacker, but. Uh, Underrated delivery in this format of the game. A full toss. The, the full toss, yeah. Because obviously, you try, if you're trying to bowl your Yorkers, sometimes you get your sort of that half volley length and you're sort of in the slot. Whereas if you bowl a full toss nine times out of ten, you tend to get away with it and it normally ends up being a one or a, or a dot. So You often see low full tosses at the top of the game. Still, people struggle to put them away. Yeah, I mean, it's just because it's almost as the batsman expects it to hit the pitch. So all of a sudden, you do bowl, do bowl a full toss. It's kind of, kind of almost a surprise. <laughs> Mark is the same. Trying to throw the stumps down. I don't know if you caught that on our cameras, but another ex excellently executed Yorker. You can sense the, the anticipation, I think the nerves from everyone. Oh, there's a few nerves floating around the Cambridgeshire team, that is for sure. Oh, it's a brilliant stop from James Williams. Saved. Maybe another run there, depending if Harrison Craig would have got round. The brand of the team showing everyone how to do it, you see. Look. <laughs> Surprise, I'm just surprised he's played two games in a day. Yeah, I say um, normally he plays one, but um, I suppose this will be it's, it's his finale year and this could potentially be his last game of T20 cricket. So, And he's missing Father's Day for his, for his newborn course, child for today. So. Probably deserves a second outing, I suppose. What a trooper. Bobby. They need 37 off 30. They now need... Fraser and Southgate in as well. 28. Harvachini, 28 off four overs. 28 off four overs. 107 for four at uh, the Hertfordshire uh, ground. And they're there, second of two matches against Norfolk. All we need from a Cambridgeshire perspective is for Norfolk to take the honours. Might prove a difficult a task for them. Cambridgeshire doing their best here at Bedford, at the Bedford uh, Cricket Club. They've uh, so far got Bedford on 97-4-3 after uh, in the 15th over now. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if they are able to win uh, over their near neighbours whilst uh, uh, Norfolk a bit of a journey home. That's not out the middle of the back, Craig Park. Another ball into the deck. Rob's there doing the work. Brilliant field and giving it to one. I think the refresh buttons on our on our iPad and laptop, respectively, are going to be somewhat worn by mm. uh, the, the refresh end of the, button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The remaining uh, six. It's one of those one of those sites which doesn't automatically update unless you do the work on it. Craig Park doing a fantastic job here. Just just not going for boundaries. I think that's the point we tried to make earlier. If we just build a bit of pressure, 
so he might give. At Old Trafford, Pakistan, 102 for one. They need 235 runs to win from their remaining uh, 28 overs against India in today's uh, World Cup match. Craig Park coming in again and bowls to be a bit of pace off that time. Hit into the offside towards Jamie Seabrook and his floppy hat on the boundary. Cambridge here doing all they can. Five and a bit overs to go. Craig Park in again. Another well-executed Yorker down to Tim Moses on the long off boundary. Craig Park in again. Full toss, that one it's straight to Callum Guest. Cover. And another very good over from Craig Park. The spectators, which we have uh, a good collection, a couple of dozen, I'd say, overall, over and above those in the pavilion, all parked up along the, uh, the side uh, of, of the field. That's the trees surrounding... Uh, everything else, the uh, the sight screen, uh, which is uh, directly opposite us here, as the uh, the black coverings to protect uh, or enable the uh, batsman to see the white ball. They're sort of slipping off slightly at the top. I'm sure they'll stay uh, where they are sufficiently to uh, complete the remaining of five overs here. Uh, Bedfordshire on 104 for three, chasing the 100 and 58 set for them uh, by Cambridgeshire a little earlier on. I mean, while in the half of year, not looking uh, good at all. 124 uh, for four is the uh, the score against uh, Norfolk now. So uh, not too far uh, for Hertfordshire to chase down. That's just another uh, 10 runs which uh, they require. If uh, Cambridgeshire are to attend finals day, the Norfolk need to get a few wickets and very quickly indeed. You feel like the dream's over. Harrison Craig in bowls. James Williams, just a bit of a fumble cover. What is the the competition everyone wants to win? Is it is it a day T twenty five day? Is it the longer format still? Oh well for me personally it's Matt it's the getting to the championship final three day stuff. Um I don't I don't really I can't really oh catch it. Ooh. Harrison Craig the bowler high short in the air. Josh Bowers underneath it a long way up and a comfortable catch in the end. You think he was helped by his wicket keeper gloves on that one. <laughs> yeah, he's a fantastic keeper. Yeah, as as he, he, he knew it was coming, didn't he? And he sort of um, half ran back and sort of and the half half ran forwards to uh, to make sure that when the ball came down, it was going to be into his gloves. It does look like Cambridgeshire are going to get home here. Don't want to put any yeah mockers on it. Obviously, so it <laughs> could be a could be a hollow victory by the sounds of things. I think. Hmm. Yeah, we'll come on to. I guess where you take it later on once the game is finished and all the permutations are finalised but yeah you were saying the, the three day game is, is the one you especially yeah I mean there's quite a few lads here uh, kind of sort of old school cricketers um, there's quite a lot of us who really really enjoy the three day format I um, can't speak for everyone but um, I know personally for me winning the winning the Eastern Division would be, would be fantastic we haven't done it since 2013 my first year so it um, would be nice to do it again um, but obviously this is the this is the future of the game so um yeah, I mean, T20 finals day is always great. Things at Worms, finals at Wormsy this year, and that's a mm. brilliant place to play cricket. So um, it'd always be nice to be involved in that. Yeah, Berkshire, the champions last season. Harrison Craig in again. Ooh, a big swing and a miss. Refresh, button is still being tapped, but... Uh, no update as of yet. There was quite a long wait between the last over and, and the one just gone. I was wondering whether there were a couple of wickets falling or or balls being retrieved from boundaries. It looks like there's going to be a ball retrieved here. It's a full toss from Harrison Craig and it's gone way back. That's gone miles. I reckon that's the biggest today. There's been a few, but that is massive. Into the trees. And Callum Guest is going to have to get an, a, probably a bus <laughs> back to Bedford after that. 
use a dreadful modern phrase. Oh, this is not looking good. 133 for four then uh, for Hertfordshire at the moment. So they just need two more uh, two more runs. Uh, they two need more. three more runs in order to uh, win that game. But um, as things stand, it looks like uh, things, well, uh, the T20's finals day might be lost uh, for Cambridgeshire, as as might the ball be as well. I don't see much sign of that reappearing at the moment. Lost two players as well. And have a few were doing um, uh, some Get exercises. Who's, who's the guy there who's wobbling his knees from side to side? What's going on? That Craig. Clearly, you said tired. Yeah, mate, he was blowing. And there's another player as well. I see over the. Is that a player? It is a player, isn't it? Not so always a spectator <laughs> over the far side of the field, uh, lying down. I think that's Wackass, yeah, he's tired <laughs> as well. Long days for these old boys, I tell you. Yeah, all but, all but confirmed. Hertfordshire will win Group 3. Harrison Craig, and again, is blocked into the offside for a single. We speak about it every year, don't we? But I guess we speak about it every year when Cambridgeshire finished second. But it is harsh, isn't it? One qualifying from each group. Yeah, I think I think there should be some sort of knockout in the middle. Um, I think it's very, very hard to to win your group. And I think we've played some really, really good cricket. And I think, feel like we deserve to be there in a way. Especially, well, last year was the one where we, we felt robbed because we did win most of our games. And unfortunately, got pipped to the post. But, um, yeah, no, one one one. one one person for the finals day, I think, is a bit a bit tough. I feel like there should be another round potentially for the for the second team because to finish second, you've still got to play some fantastic cricket. So, um, do you it, feel with the the, the three day game being reduced down to four matches, it might bring in a bit more room for T20 more sort of a quarter final stage for the T20s? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the idea. I think we're going to play more. There's a restructuring of the white ball stuff. So, hit down to Josh Smith down in front of us here, got to be taken and thrown back to Craig Park. All over, I'm afraid, at Hertfordshire, 137 uh, for four. That's like off of uh, 18 point, uh, two overs, so just under two overs uh, to spare. Um, and Hertfordshire managed to uh, beat Norfolk in the, in the second of those two matches, meaning that, uh, however, uh, Cambridgeshire uh, finish here. You know, a bit of a good spell, really. The ball as it comes uh, goes straight uh, towards us at the Peter Allen end. The uh, bails are off, but uh, batsman definitely uh, home, and the umpire uh, just uh, popping them uh, back on again. Umpire Medlin just uh, making sure everything's okay before uh, walking back to his spot uh, behind the stumps. In comes Craig Park, short of a length, punch similarly down the ground. Tim Moses doing the work this time, and manages to field. Really well, great throw as well, great arm. And then just for the single. Yeah, I'm gonna not for me, but we'll give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a face for radio, that is for sure. Parker doing a very good job here of just just not conceding boundaries. I think that's very important at this stage, just not conceding boundaries. And again, once again, just a single down the ground. There was a spell when we spoke when Harrison was bowling in the, those two sixes, and, and since then, you can hardly remember many boundaries at all. No, it is, it is, it is the key in one-day cricket. I think, if, yeah, sorry, T20 cricket. If you, um, if you can just go for one, one a ball, um, you're more than happy. It's the boundaries that, that cost, do cost you. Just to be a leg by as the facing batsman hobbles back. I was going to say, with a slight, uh, as they just, uh, just straight on the foot, yeah. a knock on that one. <laughs> the uh, ball went the wrong place. One place where you don't have any protection on your legs. Is your, is your foot, yeah. Umpire just uh, checking is okay. Give me a little pat to see if it's okay. Uh, umpire Medlin's uh, concerned for the uh, the welfare of the Bedfordshire uh, batsman after uh, that unfortunate knock. Parking again, just back of a length again, struggling to get it away. It's possibly going to be two here because it's split. The fielder's on the boundary and it all rubs hair at the stumps and the batsman looked to be, <laughs> the batsman who was hobbling, looked to be short. Couldn't quite see Josh Smith in the way. And the over it seems. So Sam, obviously immediate reaction. Obviously must be pretty disappointed to confirm that we won't be at T20 finals then. Or yeah, disappointed. I mean, we came in today just do our job. Um, we probably let ourselves down in terms of previous results, not turning up until three o'clock on, on most days. I mean, losing the first game pretty easily in a couple of, on a couple of Sundays, which we've done ourselves no favours there. So I hope you're a strong side. Um, we had a good day day against them at Peterborough where we won one each. Um, but yeah, I mean... Is there any game in particular that stands out that you think, God, if we'd have 
just done this or if and but? I think I think there's a yeah a few moments. I don't think there's one day necessarily. I think there's a few games where we could have. There's a few moments where we could have um, could have improved. So Harrison Craig coming in now to bowl full toss and it's hit towards. Is that Rob said down there? Was that Eddie Ballard down there? It's Eddie Ballard. Eddie down Ballard, there, yeah. and it's gone over him anyway. It doesn't matter who it is. You can tell by his swag. <laughs> so it trots after the ball. Throws it back. They're not too uh, happy about having to go and uh, fish that one out. So the last of Harrison Craig's four overs has gone for 35 so far. That will make it 41. A bit of expensive. Uh, no run after that delivery, 120, uh, 126 uh, for four now, the 18th over. Uh, Bedfordshire chasing 159, that's the target they have to reach. Towards the leg side again, towards long on. Oh, and a misfield from Eddie Ballard, but I don't think it mattered too much anyway. Because that, that's the 50. Standing up towards the uh, pavilion and applauding. They're getting a bit boisterous, I notice, over there as well <laughs> at the moment. Uh... AJ Momi's got his 50, and he's now got 56. It's a wonderful shot over the leg side. Does strike the ball very clearly. I've only played against this lad a couple of times, and both times I've been pretty impressed with how he hits the ball. He does hit it very hard. Another wicket at Old Trafford, actually. This is in the uh, Pakistan-India uh, match. 119 for two now, Pakistan, uh, with uh, 218 runs uh, to um, get from their uh, remaining 25.2 uh, overs. Probably going to turn into a T20 match, that, isn't it? You'd imagine. It's got a long old day, really. Have they got uh, 50 overs to play on both both sides? <laughs> Not sure why they're looking for the ball there. That's gone a long way. The umpire seems to have one in his hand. Probably one of the ones he fetched earlier. Yes, we can. But I guess it's the thing about them being of same same condition. Yeah, yeah. Balls are very important. It's not as important in white ball cricket, really. Um, the balls don't really do much. No, I think la last time it was like the last uh, last but one ball of the uh, of, of your innings, the Cam Cambridgeshire innings. Uh, the ball went missing. The umpire just quite happily that took out a ball with two balls to go. At that point, he didn't really care too much about whether what what condition they were in, as long as they were they were playable. I think he was happy to to go ahead with that. Seems to be a slightly different story though this time. That's the way they're running out of balls. They had a whole a whole box full of the things. The thing is they're, uh, they're all new in there. I think that's the problem. 17 overs in, we don't want a new ball out there. Here's a stupid question for you. How much does a cricket ball cost these days? Uh, I'm not sure what these cost. Um, a decent red ball will set you back 60 or 70 pounds. Um, certainly like top of the range uh, Duke balls we use in minor counties cricket. Oh, and Josh Smith comes in. It's a good catch. A leaning edge in the end from the man who just got his 50 and just hit that six. AJ Mommy and uh, into the offside, a good catch from Josh Smith. Harrison Craig has got a wicket. So when do the, the three-day championship officially get underway? Sunday. So, yeah, a week. So we, we don't really get much of a break. We thought <laughs> I thought we'd get a couple of weeks off and I thought I'd have a, a Sunday to myself. But we're at March um, against Norfolk, I think, in a... Um, in a three days starting Sunday, so we play Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and that'll be every other weekend we play um, for the next sort of two and a half months. So. And of course, you've got the 50 over competition sort of in between. Yes, that's so that's at the end of this month, we're going up to Staffordshire. I think we're playing at Nipersley uh, against a very strong staff side there. They'll be very good. So that's us put a good performance there and hope that we can um, come out on top. Yeah, and if you win, you're in the semis. And then... Yeah, I say you're two, two wins away from the from the final. So that'd be that's another opportunity for us. Obviously, this one's. Slipped us by, but I certainly another one we're still in. So, and uh, the, is the is the team similar in terms of from the the T Twenty to the the Fifty Over competition? Yeah, we have a pretty um, certainly in the white ball stuff. We have a pretty small squad that um, there's not much difference between between the two squads. Um, I don't think there's going to be much difference this year. Looking at it in in the, in the three day stuff either. I mean, we've got a bunch of local lads who enjoy playing for Cambridgeshire, and um, some very very talented cricketers in this side, and them. Um, Hoping we can glue together, and then obviously the three three day campaign will be a bit different. See Red Bull, but um, I think it'll be the same bunch of sort of the same bunch of lads playing all three formats. I guess selection and 
how many days you're allowed off work come into it with the three-day stuff? Yeah, it's, that's a big thing in terms of three-day stuff is um, availability of players. I think that's why next year they've chosen to only play four games because then you obviously raise the bar a little bit of the standard because you have all the best players playing because then you have to take eight days off work rather than the, the 12 at the minute, which is quite a lot, quite a lot of time off work if, you, if you're a full-time full -time employee. Mm. You've got a family and stuff. It's, it, it does get tough, so... Craig Park to continue bowl very well so far. It's a good length ball, just hit into the offside. Jamie Siebert will come round to collect. It's 136 for five. Now we're still uh, Bedfordshire. Uh, uh, 20, 23 runs uh, off of the target which it could go either way really at this at this stage couldn't it a couple of a couple of wickets and that's got them pinned back a bit and a, a couple of boundaries and they're they're up close to that target yeah i say i think um so obviously there's dot worth lewis is there under the first things on the scoreboard um that's probably that's normally quite a good gauge of where where a team needs to be at Ooh, it was josh smith well fielded every run counts at this stage yeah that's a gauge and they're about par so it's, it's in the balance a little bit here one big over will do it. For either side, arguably. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. Parker doing a fantastic job here. Mm. Just changing his paces. Boundaries. Oh, oh, well. he's bowled him. Brilliant delivery once again for Craig Butt, deservingly picking up a wicket. And that could be the wicket which is needed for Cambridgeshire, just to stem uh, the tide of the Bedfordshire runs and to make sure that even though uh, they can no longer qualify for, for finals, they can at least win uh, these two matches here today so they can hold their heads up still reasonably high. And it has been a good season for them overall, as you've, uh, as you've been saying, Sam. Yeah, we've had, a, we've, had a good, we've had a good season. Obviously, there's moments. You always talk about it in any sport. I think you talk about moments that could go either way. Um, and yeah, yeah, there's been a couple probably earlier on in the in the piece where we sort of I wouldn't say complacent but it, it just didn't went up to us you feel actually. you have to be straight out of the blocks right yeah, from the exactly. very first match and all the way through through there's no no sort of um re resting is the wrong phrase but uh, no just sitting back on for that for that first match or if if something goes wrong ah oh, it doesn't matter we can make that up uh, through the course of the remaining fixtures yeah, you certainly have to start fast this comp it's not it's it, it's 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 longer than it used to be but it's not a long comp and if you don't start fast you're always chasing Chasing your tail a little bit. So, yeah, unfortunately, early on, we didn't really do what we needed to do. And now we've ended up chasing our tail a little bit. But 159 being chased at the moment. 138 for six, Bedfordshire. Oh, that's a fantastic Yorker, that. What a ball from Craig Park. He's bowled really well so far. Before this over, three overs, 14 runs, just for the one wicket. But it's picked up another in this over. Very nearly picked up his third there. Under, underrated bowler. Really is. He's a very, very good cricketer. Good cricketing family. There's three three brothers. Let's see if they can keep it tight for the remainder of this over. Oh, nice slow ball there. And he's might have picked up Callum Guest too and he's dived again. Might have got a fingertip too, but it's come to Jamie Seabrook. He's covered around. Possible chance. Tell him he's dropped it on Wednesday. <laughs> Reckon if Tim was there, we'd have had a chance. <laughs> Can't have too many everywhere, unfortunately. So another over passes Bedfordshire on 140 for six. Two overs remain. They require 20, uh, 19, sorry, to win. What do you reckon, Sam? Hopefully in the bag. I think if Tim goes for more more than more than 10 here, I think he's um, not hit his plans. So we should be all right. 128 for three now for Pakistan, still needing 209 uh, to win off uh, 23.4 overs against India at Old Trafford. So two wickets uh, for the Pakistanis falling in quick succession. Big game up in Old Trafford in the World Cup. Be good to catch the highlights of that one perhaps later on television. Yes, the two guys for chemistry have bowled out. Harrison Craig, four overs, 50 runs, two wickets. And Craig Park, four overs, 18 runs, two wickets. It's a bit of a contrast in the run score, but both picking up a couple of wickets. Tim Moses now on to bowl his last. So far, got figures of three overs, one maiden, 12 runs for two wickets. So bowled very, very well early on. And he comes once again then. Right arm. Oh, just there. 
that's really good skills from Tim. Obviously, being a big lad, balls it, balls are quite heavy. Can be a little bit of a fear factor there. So, if he can execute sort of slow balls and stuff, it is a big surprise. Because it uh, looked like it stopped in the pitch, which yeah, probably a variation from ball, yeah, yeah. A little variation, especially someone sort of Tim's sort of stature. Um, see him running in that, there's a bit of definitely a fear factor there. And to bowl a little slower ball, it does deceive the batsman. So it's a clever way to do it. Very smart captaincy as well, holding Tim back for these uh, final overs. It is important to make sure you... Oh, it's well bowled you, again. You bowl the right bowlers at the right time. It is very important to... Certainly, like with Tim bowling at the death, um, you need to make sure you keep him, a, keep him a couple of overs back. Looking for the other bowlers' figures, Josh Smith, three overs, 23 runs, no wickets. Rob Sayer, two overs, 16 runs, no wickets. Callum Guess, eight runs off his one over. I mentioned Harrison Craig and Craig Park. Wackers are saying two overs for nine, did a brilliant job at stemming the flow, and those middle overs are a really crucial point, and that was. Here comes Tim Moses again. Oh, just pace off the ball again. It looks, but high in the air. And that's gone all the way over the rope for six. Right over the other side of the ground uh, from us uh, for that one. Possibly the furthest distance to uh, get away from our, our commentary position here to the... Uh, level to to the left of the pavilion. So the pavilion is on our our right as we look out over Bedford Cricket Club on this Cambridge 105 radio uh, telecast this afternoon. So six off the last for Tim Moses, looking for a response. A short ball, oh, the splice of the bat, and it will just be a single. And a good response from Tim. Very good change up that. Yeah, that's that's the ability he has, and that is the um, it's obviously the fear factor a little bit there. Self-preservation for the batsman. 148 for six, chasing 159. So two balls remain of this over. Bedford Shear require 11. It's very tight. Oh, Moses bowls. Must have hit almost his armpit area. Ran through for a bite. So just the 10 required now. A big over whoever's bowling the last will... Who do you reckon will be handed the ball? I think this is the last Ollie I do. Oh, apologies, sorry. Do, do, do. No, do you have to tell you that 18. With the 20 I know one. you want to carry on being here all day, <laughs> but... We'd love it. Do, do another... Do you imagine? We'd have to cover two T20s. Let's cover a third. The laptop was just covering the bottom half of the nine, and I assume it was like... There we go. Oh. To, uh, to, to the side. See, it's, uh, it is the final over. Oh, well, Tim. And no run as well on that one. And that looks like... That is the end of play then. That's it. Shake of hands uh, between uh, the two uh, batsmen there. Bedfordshire full 10 runs short in the end. But a good day at the office for Cambridgeshire. Good match in the first one. Comprehensive victory. Slightly more nervy in the second one, but two wins. They'll be happy with that. Yeah, it was superb bowling, wasn't it? And that final over from Tim Moses. Yeah, very good bowling. Um, yeah, good day out, but disappointing, obviously. Um, would have liked to get to the final day, but we... we, we it, it, almost, it was almost, I suppose, really, it was um, three victories, you could say, you were looking for, we were looking for uh, we, we, today. You were two, two which you could control and uh, did very handsomely. And that third one, and Norfolk weren't able to overcome Hertfordshire. And uh, that meaning uh, that no trip to the uh, the finals day for, for a second year. No trip, but um, a good a good season, I think. So, and we've done what we can today. So yeah, we'll let you go off and shake hands. Thank you very much, Bedfordshire Bay. Thank you, Anna, Sam. Cheers. Take care, guys. I'm sure you see you on uh, on from the pavilion. Uh, Sam Eppington, thank you very much uh, for joining us this afternoon. Sam is just uh, uh, jogging over there, hopping over the uh, boundary rope, and uh, uh, meeting his colleagues as they come off of the field. There's going to be a uh, looks of things a, a shake of the hands for each of the two uh, Bedfordshire uh, batsmen who have. Uh, uh, did their best to see their team home, but uh, 10 uh, runs as short of the target, which had been set for them earlier this afternoon. Uh, the players all uh, walking off. The, at this point, the uh, Bedfordshire team uh, come out of the pavilion. They're shaking the hand one by one of the uh, Cambridgeshire uh, players. It looks like Sam Robertson's just delivered the news to the Cambridgeshire players as well. Yeah, that's, that's very kind of you, Sam. Uh, Tim Moses, um, uh, the final at last of the, the Cambridgeshire players going in, and uh, the two umpires who have umpired both of these uh, uh, matches today, umpire Dobbs, umpire Medland, uh, they're shaking their hands as well. And uh, finally, after uh, he's worn it for most of the uh, most of the day, really. But umpire Dobbs <laughs> takes takes off his hat. Uh, thank you, sir, for wearing that hat. It made it very easy to uh, to tell you apart uh, from your colleague. 
Somebody moving in, the Cambridgeshire uh, players going into uh, their dressing room in the middle, if you like, between the scoreboard and the pavilion. Maybe the Bedfordshire players seeing if they can have a little bit more lasagna, if there was any left over. <laughs> I suspect there possibly wasn't. It looked absolutely delicious. Uh, so they are going into pavilion now, maybe um, a few beers if they're allowed to do so. I'm sure that might be the case. Uh, Cambridgeshire, they can celebrate two wins here today at Bedford Cricket Club, but not so, unfortunately, uh, a, a trip to finals day for them later on. Uh, that's uh, due uh, to Norfolk not being able uh, to beat Hertfordshire. And I, I guess, Ollie, it would have been an upset, if truth be told, had Norfolk been able uh, to score uh, higher than Hertfordshire in, in either of those those games today at Harpenden. Yeah, I've been to see what James Williams came to skip us to say. I'll go get his thoughts in a minute, but yeah... I mean, coming into it, things would have had to gone their way and, and luck would have been on their side. And it's just so frustrating because it was so tight at the end in that Hertfordshire Norfolk game. And, you know, we took it to the last two overs of the match and just couldn't quite manage to get over the line. Norfolk, it's so frustrating. Obviously, second year in a row that Cambridgeshire have literally just missed out. Um, this time they did all they could and uh, not much they could do. Uh, today, but uh, just unfortunate that results didn't go their way elsewhere. Yeah, job done well on the field here at Bedford Cricket Club, but uh, of course you can't control what uh, happens uh, elsewhere. Uh, so Cambridgeshire uh, lose out. Stay with us. We will continue this telecast and try and grab a couple of views of the um, players if uh, if we can. Uh, Ollie will be going across to. Yes, Tiffany, a choice of two cameras. I'm about to pick the wrong one. Ollie will be going across to interview the players. In fact, Ollie, if you bring bring them back here, they can uh, uh, they can they can sit and they can uh, tell their mothers that they're on the television as well, can't they? It seems a, a reasonable plan. I will uh, take this opportunity if I can. I'll first of all, I'll uh, bring you up to date on uh, what's happening in the India-Pakistan game and a bit of a collapse going on at Old Trafford uh, for Pakistan at the moment. They are 100 and 31 for five and so i think they've lost two or three wickets in the uh, last uh, few moments uh Uhak was uh, out for uh, seven runs a man for uh, 62 here's the top scorer so far azam for 48 hafiz uh, is out for uh, nine and uh, malik out uh, without troubling uh, the score was out uh, first bowl, uh, ball there, so uh, a duck for him, unfortunately. Uh, Captain Ahmed is currently uh, on two runs and Wasim is on one. So uh, they are uh, Pakistanis doing their best uh, to uh, reply there this afternoon at Old Trafford to uh, India's score. Uh, as things stand at the moment, well, India got 336 for five off of uh, their 50 overs and uh, Pakistan requiring 205 runs um, to off of the remaining uh, 22 overs at Old Trafford. So that match has probably got uh, another hour and a half at least to run there. Uh, here at Bedford Cricket Club, Ollie is just uh, uh, making his way across to the pavilion, trying to uh, pull back uh, a player or two who might want to, uh, to speak to us here. Uh, we will uh, run through the card uh, in this innings. In the meantime, uh, starting off with uh, the Cambridgeshire uh, innings, uh, Hussain uh, was uh, first out, caught by Matt uh, Taylor but off the bowling of uh, Darlow for six. Uh, Ballard was uh, bowled by Darlow for nine, did so well in the first of the two games. Uh, Moses, who did go pretty good with the ball, wasn't able to do quite so well uh, with the bat. He was out for 11. Uh, Callum Guest, the top scorer in the Cambridgeshire innings. Uh, Callum has scored a, a neat 50, uh, including a couple of fours in that as well. Uh, Josh Smith, who joined us for our first commentary stint on uh, Cambridge uh, 105 Radio, has run out uh, for 17. Uh, Craig Park, second highest scorer, uh, he was run out as well. Momi got him for 42. And uh, then we had uh, Rob, uh, Rob Sayer, uh, who uh, was uh, not out at the end of the day for uh, eight. Actually, Callum not out. I'm uh, just double-checking the score there. Callum not out, and uh, he managed to uh, uh, to score 50. It was 50 there. So uh, 
Cambridgeshire earlier on, finishing up on 158 for five. Uh, that brings us to uh, the Bedfordshire innings, which I'm hoping has uh, has uh, updated. Uh, for that, uh, Brearley, Drew Brearley was uh, out for uh, three runs. Uh, Andy Reynoldson for 57, uh, captain, of course, of the uh, Bedfordshire side. Uh, Jack Keeping uh, out for a duck. Uh, didn't score in uh, this innings. Uh, Momi scored uh, 56, only one uh, run shy of uh, Reynoldson's total. Uh, total. Uh, George Thurston's uh, was uh, bowled by Harrison Craig, uh, caught by Josh Bowers, I should say, the wicket keeper off the bowling of Harrison Craig uh, for seven. Uh, Mark Walson home uh, was bowled by Craig Park for four. Uh, Patrick Harrington uh, not out on five. And uh, George Darlow not out on nine. I'm looking across. I have. I can see Ollie. I think uh, who is over there. Ollie, do you have anybody with you at the moment? No, not at the minute. No, just one. They must be getting changed. Williams. James Williams clearly given a rousing speech after the end of the play. Obviously, disappointed to miss out. But no, no movement as of yet. No movement as yet. Well, we'll keep a keep an eye, and when we can, we'll uh, we'll grab a word. Is, is, is there not a journalist I can see there in a purple shirt who might might want to give his view to you? Uh, there, I can't. Ah, oh, there we go. There he is. He's just getting the beers out. There he is. He's precociously bal balancing the beers. Is the Cambridge Cricket Club's captain? I'll let him deliver those beverages to the team, and hopefully he'll pop back out for a chat. No, they'll be they'll be deserved. Let's make sure there's one for him when he comes <laughs> back from his uh, his conversation there with you, Ollie. So Ollie Slack, uh, uh, just behind me here uh, in the pavilion, where he is uh, looking to uh, have a chat. Uh, with the Cambridgeshire uh, captain. So uh, Cambridgeshire uh, winning this uh, second, I mean, won both of the matches, 158 uh, for five. Uh, Bedfordshire were just able to get 149 <laughs> uh, uh, from their innings. I'm hearing some sort of microphone movement, which is uh, uh, seems to be going on here. Just checking behind me uh, to see what happens. I'm fetching some... Um, uh, some more, uh, some more beers. No, I think uh, I think uh, Sam Riverton has just taken the beers off James Williams, and uh, James Williams has then has, has pulled his pants down when he's not looking, or trousers down, so to say, not pants. Pulled his trousers down uh, with his back to him. So uh, I think that's too much, too much information <laughs> on that, uh, on, on that Ollie by the the the, the looks of things. Yeah. Uh, how do you think Cambridgeshire went today? I think I, you know, they they. Did the best that they could uh, within uh, what they were uh, were hoping to do, and that was to win the two games. They did that, uh, but unfortunately, uh, Norfolk weren't able to uh, do them a favour, as it were. Yeah, I say, obviously, bitterly disappointed. The main factor today missing out on T Twenty finals day. In terms of today's performance, they were they were, they were brilliant. You know, especially the first match from said from ball one and Eddie Ballard and Wackers saying the intent they showed to picking up a lot of wick, all the wickets and, and bottom out for 99 in the seconds. They did very well in that first match. Second match, slightly less convincing. Um, a decent score, taking them up to, to one fifth, one five eight. Um, so a really good score there, but just the ball just almost, almost looked at one stage like uh, Bedfordshire might get over the line, but again, reined it back in really well. Craig Park bowling pretty well. Waxer Sane with his Yorkers. They managed to, to eke out the sort of Stop the runs flowing from Bedfordshire and managed to get over the line in the end in in uh, in what was a, I guess with with ten minutes ago pretty close win but managed to get there in the end. Obviously, like I say, Norfolk couldn't do the business against Hertfordshire, which was the most frustrating because um, you know they'd have been keeping an eye on. Obviously, having Sam Rivington next to us, he would have wanted desperately wanted Norfolk to beat Hertfordshire. But yeah, just just gutting. Yeah, that poor didn't poor old, poor old Sam was. Uh, um, <laughs> Almost not wanting us to update the score, really, yeah. for, for fear of it going against Cambridgeshire, uh, which it uh, ultimately did, which is a, a, a great shame for a, a team which has uh, played uh, pretty well in this, uh, in this competition, uh, but looks like to be uh, finishing second in the table uh, rather than the first that they were hoping for a little earlier on today. I think if we look at that, I don't know if the table will have been updated, but let's, uh, uh, let's see if it has. It has been updated, and uh, that shows that in Unicorn, T20 at uh, Group 3, Hertfordshire on 12 points, Cambridgeshire on 10 in second place. Well, no prizes, sadly, for second in this competition. Suffolk on 8, Norfolk on 6, and Bedfordshire are hosts today. And they have been wonderful hosts to us as well uh, with four points.
Now, let's see if uh, Ollie can uh, grab hold of uh, someone to speak to, and he does indeed. And maybe we can encourage Ollie to uh, entice him over here and we can get him on camera as well. Yeah, I'm joined by James Williams, Cambridgeshire County Cricket Club captain. We're just going to move over in front of the camera so they can see your lovely face as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll start off, obviously, with the bigger picture, and obviously you must be impressed with, with the wind and, and how they've gone today. But like we said, the bigger picture... Unfortunately, not being able to qualify for finals day once again must be pretty gutting for you. Yeah, it is gutting, but we've done exactly what we need to do today. We needed two wins and two convincing wins, and we, we've done that. So from our point of view, we set a stall out early and, and we completed that. So we're happy with that. Obviously disappointing not to, to make finals day again, but you know we, we wanted to perform in white ball cricket this year, and we've had some brilliant performances so far. And like I've just said, we're, we're in quarterfinals of the 50 over competition which is you know somewhere where we haven't been for a few years now and we're, we're really looking forward to that in a couple of weeks yeah good say and, and obviously you must have had your mind at times during that second innings of the second match on the the game at Harpenden and North, North against Hertfordshire we let Rippers know how near and he was getting a bit nervous but do you guys have any idea yeah we were getting a few people around the boundary giving us a uh, little updates but like I said we, we we're trying to concentrate on what we were doing I think we we got sucked into that last year you know, worried about other fixtures and we, we took our eye off our game. So, like I said, we, we just wanted to, to d get those two wins, two convincing wins in today and we certainly did that. Yeah, go back to today's um, performances then. First win, uh, first game was as convincing as you like, from ball one and Eddie Ballard and Waxer Saints attempt to picking up ten wickets in the second innings. Yeah, we, we played fantastic first game. That's exactly the cricket, what we've shown to do in this format and, you know, what we've done all season so far. And, those two at the top of the order can be absolutely devastating when they both get going and when you've got the likes of you know Tim Moses, Craig Park and Robbie Sahir coming in low, as low down as that is what he did in the first innings to, to keep going with that run rate and to get that massive total on the board, it's fantastic. Yeah, obviously Rob Sahir picking up the five wickets and getting 42 on the score in the first match. The second match was slightly more tight, a bit more nerve-wracking, but other guys contributed as well. The likes of Craig Park bowling really well at the end. Wackers are saying again, two overs just for nine as well, so everyone contributing. Yeah, we, we've got a fantastic squad. It's only me that doesn't really do anything in this squad. So, uh, yeah, every, everybody does something in that in that team and we can adapt to any situation. If we need seamers, we've got Waxy and we've got Kaparki. You know, the, the likes of Rippo, who missed out this game, you know, he's a fantastic cricket and fantastic bowler at this level. So when we've got people like that to rely on and, and come back to, we're in a pretty strong position. And like I say, disappointing to miss out on finals day, but you touched on it a bit then. You've improved and, and, and got closer again this year, obviously missing out again, but you can see clear progression, I guess, as captain. That's all you can ask for. Yeah, that's all we've asked for. We, we set a stall out early doors in pre-season. White ball cricket was our, was our main aim this year, and we wanted to perform in that. And we've had some fantastic performances in, in T20, and we've done, so, we've done very well against Norfolk in a, uh, a couple of weeks ago. So looking forward, a couple of weeks' time against Staffordshire, strong outfit, very strong at home. So we've got to go there, and, you know, two games away from a final, which is what we're what we're aiming for. I imagine much of the team will remain the same going into that game. Yeah, we'll do. Obviously, next week with a three-day game, it would be slightly different due to availability and things like that. So yeah, white ball cricket, as we've said all season, we've got a fantastic squad to pick from. People people missing out due to the fact that other people performing. That's what we want in Cambridgeshire. And uh, and like you just touched on, the Red Bull stuff starts now. Next Sunday, don't get much of a break. Um, but <laughs> but uh, obviously working on Father's Day as well, so you can't be can't be in a good place at home either. But um, in terms of in terms of that Red Bull game, you, you touched on the fact that you wanted the White Bull to be the main sort of aim this season and going well on that. But equally, you want to do well on the Red Bull stuff to try and get yourself in the I think it's the higher groups for next yeah. season when they split down to four teams. Yeah, so we obviously want to be in that top five before it gets split into two tiers. We We've prided ourselves on our three-day stuff over the last well, decade, really. We've, we've won the Eastern Division twice and, and come close in a number of years. So we want to continue that. We've got a great squad to, to do that as well. We've got you know, Ben Seabrook coming back in, who's a, who's a brilliant Red Bull cricketer. And a lot of these lads who are playing in this White Bull stuff coming off back a good form this, that, that are available in, in Red Bull. So it's, it's really good to see. Brilliant, James. Thank you very much. And, and really well played today. We're just unlucky at the end. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks.
Cheers. Cheers. Well done, Jones. Thanks very much. Thanks to you as well. Uh, Ollie, I guess that means we're kind of done really now, doesn't it, for the... Uh, uh, for the uh, uh, telecast uh, side of um, our coverage here uh, today of those two uh, T20 games. It's a shame, as I uh, was saying to James, yeah. there, that uh, Cambridgeshire weren't able to uh, make it through the line, but they did yeah. uh, uh, the best that they could uh, in that. Uh, we will wrap up uh, this. Don't forget you can listen on the radio and indeed the podcast, uh, either via Radio Player or Apple Podcast, Ollie's uh, from the Pavilion. Next uh, edition will be on Wednesday night, I think, at uh, 6 o'clock. So you can tune in uh, for the latest on the local cricket scene in that. Um, I will be uh, waking up for breakfast uh, tomorrow morning, not with Lucy, but with Rosie Applin, who's uh, in for tomorrow, whilst uh, uh, Lucy heads back from, uh, from Italy. But uh, thank you as well uh, to Rob, who's been looking after us in our outside broadcast, Van uh, Flossie, and for you for watching and listening. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Goodbye.